can figure out how to turn my mic on. <clears throat> All right. Thank you for the kind messages, Snapthorn. Welcome, Chattius. Hello, Cat's Chimera. Kiwi, what's up? Hello, Carter. Welcome, everyone. Well, let me get the light on. Let there be light. This is Minecraft music. Although, I haven't played Minecraft in forever, so I've never heard any of this music. Like, any of it. So, it's interesting. <laughs> uh, width here, I'm going to do 16. Height, 64. We're going to do a fire trap here. But yeah, it's been a long time since I've listened to... Yeah, any any Minecraft music or played Minecraft. I haven't. I I I think I stopped once they like switched from like Bedrock to whatever. Once they started distinguishing between two different ones, that's when I stopped playing. So I don't know about any of the new stuff. Um, okay, I need fire. Okay. Give me, we have a cultist torch. Oh, what the heck? Wait, why? Why, why the, why the strange sound? Wait, what the heck? Oh, you guys can't hear that sound. My headset, like, bugged. I don't know if you could hear that, like, slight buzzing. Kapow, hello? Hope you're doing well. I know it's late where you are. Dude, I'm, like, sunburnt from working today outside. I must have, like, bumped my, my music. Hub? I don't know what it's called. Anyways, uh, sorry about that. little confused there lurking no problem see you kapow okay fried why fried carter changed username i changed the username snapthorn oh or snapthorn who are you supposed to be are you kai are you kapow Oh, that's a strange flavor. All right. Oh, succulents. Oh, what's up? Dude. Welcome. Just so you know. No, thanks. It's good to know. Yeah, what prompted the name change? I'm curious. Or was it just like, eh, time for something new? Also understandable. Okay. So to make this trap or or this we're making a fire trap is what we're doing. Terraria vibes sorta and time for something new. Gotcha. Is Snapthorn something from Terraria? I gotta play that game too. It's been so many things I gotta actually like catch up on and play and and check out. I wonder if I could rotate this whole canvas. Yeah, let's do it horizontally. I think it'll be easier for my brain. We'll do like a little mouth or something that opens up and shoots out the fire. Hello, Patrick. Hope you're doing well. Finding focus. What's up, dude? Bjork is unbearable away from game dev. It bearables. Yeah, it's bearable. It's hard, though, what it does to me, you know? Like, I get home and I'm like, bruh. <laughs> but it's good. I'm doing good. 
Just gotta get used to a new, uh, new routine. Switch things up. It is what it is? Okay. I want this to look somewhat, like, serpent-like. So maybe we give it two... Uh, two little teeth things there. And it will shoot out fire here. I guess we can give it a tooth down here. Okay, this is looking a little closer to what I'd, I'd like. Give me... Some dark stone colors. Maybe some of these. Maybe. Keyword maybe. What about this color? That's a nice color. For the darkest of darks. Okay, something like this. How long until release? Seven. Patrick is in the Twitch title. Seven days. Or do you mean the beta? Beta's gonna release way late tonight. Probably you'll be able to play it tomorrow, 3 a.m. my time, if that's what you're wondering about. Okay, so these things will be glowing so you can always see them. I like it. And these will just be stuck against walls or or other things. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking it. So now we just have to do a simple fire animation. Which yeah, should be simple. Um, maybe I do like a startup animation. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. Yeah, we'll do this flame here. So these are just going to be like activatable traps. Very similar to the first area. How there's fire traps and stuff like that. We'll have these. But these might be on like a timer. They could, you know, they could have so many different things going on. Like they could be on a timer. I can make some that are activatable. Um, I like this is this is looking good. Maybe I can actually just do this. Make that center a little more yellow. Interesting. Okay, that's kind of nice. Something like this. Yeah. Alright, cool. That's nice. Burning Clay, hello. Welcome. You created that so fast. I would have taken like 30 minutes and it wouldn't have been near as good. It's just practice. Just... Lots and lots of practice. How am I feeling before the big day? I'm looking forward to it. I don't know how I'm necessarily feeling about it entirely yet, but it is what it is. Alright, so next frame that we gotta make here. Uh, right, we want it to look different because it's gonna alternate between these two frames because, I mean... You know, it is what it is. It's fire. So, like, as you see, it extends out here. Maybe I make the edges, like, flare out, like, a little more intense. You know, it's all about just being able to make it shift enough that it looks like, oh, okay. 
And ideally we just shift it between the two and, and two should be enough, but we'll have to see. So now I'll use Ace Bright's shading tool here. Yep, and now it get us the, the lighter colors here in this fire. Nice. Nice, very nice. See, and it looks good enough with them being like this, except this one definitely needs to be brighter coming out the mouth there. Something like that. Whoa, Fox Hollow, what's up, dude? Thank you for the raid. I was watching you playing some, what is it, Bellatro? I don't know how you pronounce it. That game looks incredibly fun. Whoa, hey, thank you for that follow. Welcome, JJ Codes. Dog with glasses on, hello. Dude, I hope you had a good stream. Right, I probably should add in a color here, otherwise it's gonna look weird. There we go. Give me my Dinor back, please. Hey, thank you. Two month sub. Enjoy the Dinor. How's it going? It's good. I just started up. And streaming. <laughs> Dude, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, no, things are going well, though. I'm, uh, just working. Just I just got to get stuff done, you know, head down, chin up. Hope things are going well on your end. Let's have like a, a warm up, like a starting uh, frame here. So this is where we'll take this one and we'll just have it like bursting out a little bit before it has the full extension. Give me the shading. You got it, thank you. Your English is not good, no good. It's fine, dude. I understand what you're saying. The fire trap in the demo is so annoying. Maybe it would be a good idea to employ a mechanic that activates the traps when you shoot them. Or it could be an item. Yeah, if you shoot in front of them, Asim, it activates them. The movement does. Yep, you should go test it out. Just shoot in front of him. You tried it. Uh-oh. Might be broken. Snapthorn, my archers are really good. Thank you. It's not, you don't have to aim at them. You just shoot past them, like as if you're running past them. So if you just shoot at them, it they won't they won't do anything. But yeah, maybe, maybe it doesn't work. I don't know. I broke a lot of things with some changes, so we'll see. Whoa. Oh, I put in some new stuff. We gotta start from the beginning. Yeah, they should... Should be able to shoot past them. And trigger them. We'll see here in a second. That's a good thing to check. I understand, new game. Oh, see ya, Seam. Good luck with the math project, dude. I hate math. Yeah, if I come in here and I throw in the, the fire statue, let's see here. Yeah, we'll stick it right there. So let me get the bow and shoot in front of it here. So if you shoot at it, nothing's gonna happen. Shoot in front of it, should should trigger based on the movement. 
Hello, Sounds Tip. Welcome. Okay, so they're they're working fine. Good. Good, good, good. Node not found. Eye glow. And power up lizard relic. Huh? Or in sacrificial dagger? Uh oh, I might have ruined something. Interesting. So I can't have those eyes glowing. I made a I made a a sprite that has like a specific glow that the other items don't have, but it looks like it tried to apply it to all the items. That's okay. At least we caught it early on. Okay, so this, so this is good as a it, it'll start it up and then it can bring it back. I like that. Then we can fill in like a lot of other cool stuff with particle effects. And honestly, in this frame here, let's go. Oh. Okay, wait, bring me back here. I have no idea how I just did what I did. Okay, wait, bring me back in here. This should start further back. And then this right here, it seems like it shifts down quite a bit from the other. That's looking better. <laughs> do I remember the golden butter knife? I do remember the golden butter knife. It is no longer a golden butter knife. Yeah, the golden butter knife should actually be in here. I bet it's pretty recent too. This... Oh yeah, golden butter knife. Yeah, no, now it looks a lot better. Thanks for roasting. Okay, so that's, this is good for me at least for a fire trap. So we'll save this. Oh, we gotta export it first. Export as a sprite sheet. File save as fire trap. PNG. We'll call this serpent fire trap. Save. So there's that. Um, do I want any others? Because out of all the traps, we have spikes. We have statues that you can break. That will create serpents, ghost serpents. We have... Now we have serpent fire statues. We'll have pustules that explode and hurt you. I think that's probably good. Let me go ahead and let's... Um, let me make sure the pustules are actually damaging the player. And so they have a hitbox, which is looking for. We want to look for the for the player hitbox, hitbox, not the enemies. Same with pustule small. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's make the serpent statue a thing, and then. We'll be good to start creating levels. Believe it or not. Okay, new scene. We'll call this Serpent Fire Trap. We need to give it an area 2D that checks for the player. Or do we? Hey, Kiwi, thank you for the gifted sub. I appreciate that. We're at 115? 
Also, remember when you said, Wit, I will probably get to play the demo more than anyone, and I asked if that was a challenge, and you said yes. You took it seriously. Oh, let's see it. How, how much did you play the demo? Thank you. We thank you for the community subs. You've been gifting a community sub out, like, every stream? Very generous. Thank you. Super helps me out. You should record it, Snapthorn. Okay, we're gonna go Sprite. Because obviously it needs its sprite. It's gonna need an animation player. That can be separate from the sprite. It's gonna need... I think we can probably get away with a Raycast, right? Maybe not. No, yeah, no. I think we gotta go... Area 2D is probably the best the best way to handle this, so we give it a collision shape. Stream it, dude. Stream it. Um, my The Feather Turban has its own category on sh Twitch. <laughs> Revere? What's up, my friend? Cheers. I don't have Coke, but I do have soda, so. Or Monster. But I appreciate that, dude. I hope you're doing well. How's your game coming along? Sneaking in before stream? Get it, dude. Have a good stream. Uh, detect. This is just to, de to detect the player here. Won't be monitorable. It is monitoring. We're looking for only the player. And... Perfect. Okay, we need to create a script. We'll throw a detect into it. Body entered. Got console added today? Oh, what? You got a console added today? Like, what do you mean? To your game, or... What do you mean you got a console added? If that means what I think it is, that's sick, dude. Have a good one. Hey, thank you. See you, Snapthorn slash Succulents. I appreciate you always popping in, dude. Like a uh, console for spawning stuff. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying over here. Heck yeah, that's huge. I still don't have one for my game, and I, let me tell you, I suffer every day for it. <laughs> then again, I guess Godot kind of has its own built-in one, but it's definitely limited. All right, take me into enemies. Take me into temple enemies. Serpent fire trap, save. Okay, we're gonna go ahead here and let's create the animations for this thing. Serpent fire trap. It's not very many frames. One, two, three, four. It's four frames. Nice. I like the simplicity. I am also going to need a light 2D. And you know what? Pfft, maybe even some particles. But I'll mess with the particles in a second. Um, let's create our first animation here. So we'll go new animation, fire. We got to give a few. Fr the, I know it's only point one frame or whatever, but that still gives the player some time to react so that it feels not horrible. Okay, and then we just alternate between these two for, I don't know how long. Maybe make the whole thing two seconds. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go, nine, ten. Then I could duplicate all of these. Okay, so we double it. That seems like a good time. And then the whole animation ends at this 2.1, 2.2. 2 2.2, we, we retract it in. 2.3, you're done. So let's go 2.4. Slash 2.5. Frostern, hello? You're going to be lurking? No worries, dude. Lurk. Lurk. 
Dude, I feel you on the whole dishes. Oh my gosh, we'll talk later. <laughs> Can I see how this looks? Yeah, it's good. If I really wanted to make it spicy, I'd just I'd do a third animation or a third frame. That's okay. We can we can say it's good as is. Let's create a light 2D. So this light 2D is going to need to cover this area here. So let's go bio. We have bio glow here that we can repurpose. Let me just make sure it's sh flipped the right way. Yeah, see that? That's that's pretty cool. And so we'll be modulating its energy here. So right here, it's at zero energy. And we'll make it discrete. Okay, and then when we finish here, we'll be at zero. So now this fire lights up, which should look cool. I'm hoping. What does BioGlow look like? Okay, it looks some... It looks okay. So now we have like this glowing fire. Perfect. Let's go ahead and create some particle effects to kind of really sell the whole effect here. So we're going to take the particle effects from the porch cultist here. So we'll open up that enemy. Yes, yeah, so this effect here. Give me that. And then we come back to our serpent fire trap. And we can do some cool stuff here. So this whole, uh, well actually we can just set this to visible or not visible, or emitting and not emitting is what we do. I love it. Let's paste this in then. So we drag it, put it where we want it, and then we create a new particle material, or we make this, this one unique, and all we do is change the direction to negative one in the X. We can change its uh, emission shape to be like one. We can change the spread to be like 15. Maybe we change the spread to be like five, honestly. Amount, we do 64. Initial velocity, we do like 50. Nice. So now we got some cool effect stuff going on. I'm just going to bring the fire frame up here so that I can see how I might want to change this effect. So maybe we do give it a spread of like 15. Maybe we give it like 128. Interesting. So that's pretty cool. To be able to create those particles. Hema Few, welcome to the YouTube stream. Welcome, welcome. We're making a fire trap. I think this is probably as good as it's gonna get. We could do like initial velocity of like 40. Maybe they won't go out as far. But then it's like not as intense. I don't know. Maybe we just keep it like that. Okay, so now to turn that on or off, we just key in whether or not it is emitting. So we key that in here. And then right here in this first frame, guess what? You're emitting. And then we turn emitting off right here. Okay, now we just have to create the shape that uh, the player has to essentially run into in order for this trap to go off. So make it a pretty, yeah, we'll make it pretty wide here. 
Something like that. I also need to give it a hitbox so that it can actually hit the player. This will be looking for the player. We gotta give it its own collision shape, which is just gonna be a square as well, but a little, we, we wanna be pretty generous here. We're always kinder to the player than you think you need to be. <laughs> always wanna be kind with the hitboxes. Okay, so there's that hitbox. Uh, we now have to turn it on and off this hitbox, depending on uh, uh yeah when it's active and when it's not active so there's that it's only enabled when the fire's actually there um i'm gonna give it a new well i think what we'll do is the detection here is usually it's not disabled so we key it in so that the reset track is not disabled. And then at the end here, the very end, we enable it. And the reset track is, it's enabled. Perfect. So now it will only, um, yeah, it will only go off if, if the player's in front of it and only goes off the one time. This is going to be zero in the reset track. Okay, this, uh, this actually should just be working. The only thing left is the sound effect. So, I mean, we key in. This is how simple the code is. When the player enters in this body, animation player dot play fire. And then sound effects dot play serpent fire trap. And then we'll play it at its normal volume and its normal pitch. So now we just gotta create or find a sound that um, we just gotta find a sound that's like a fire trap. So let's do that. Fire trap. Fire. Um, give me quick sounds. Let's go fire trap. All right, just fire. Maybe flamethrower. Say, that's pretty cool. I like that one a lot. That one's cool too. All of these are just beautiful. Okay. Oh wow, look at this. Kiwi. Hmm. How do you link stuff from Pixabay like this? How do you, I've never even seen it look like this. I like the punchiness of, uh, do you hear how this like punches though? Like that other one sounds good, but it doesn't have that like, like here, let's see, let's see how it actually applies in the, uh, in game. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this could be potentially very good. Okay, downloads. It's like pretty much this, the right uh, time frame here. Uh, let me double check. Not Discord, Goodell. How long is this? If it starts pretty much immediately and it goes for two seconds. Okay, I'm going to say it goes for two seconds. Okay, so this is actually a bit long. But that's okay because it clips anyways at the end. So I can actually get rid of this. And then I can fade this out. Wow, that's cool. 
Export. What is the serpent fire trap? Serpent fire trap. Export. Now we just put that in game. Okay. Perfect. Now it's actually already implemented in game. Should fit automatically. It'll play the sound pretty much immediately, which is cool. But even then, if I wanted to. No, yeah, I think it's fine how it is. Um. Yeah, that's that's good. This trap's a hundred percent working. Uh, all right, I think we have enough now to start creating some levels. So let me go level five base. Okay, hold on. Okay, I have so many tabs open. So we do this. I close out of everything. Just notice you're streaming, didn't get the Twitch notification. I just started like 41 minutes ago, so I don't know, it is what it is. But nonetheless, hello. Hope you're doing well. So today probably is un I mean, yeah, I mean, just got to move forward with the best of it. But today's probably a pretty average day. Also, Crumb currently standing on a branch above the camera. Which explains why you can't see him. But, uh, yeah, today, I mean, I worked. I tried to work as fast as I could. I did work pretty fast. But I was, I was only able to start streaming at, like, 3 o'clock. That's probably what it's going to be. Just, you know... I mean, I gave it, today was kind of like the test of like, all right, how, how fast can I, you know, get done with work and be able to come home? I was hoping it would be earlier, but, and, and maybe there are days when I could start it. Like, for example, tomorrow, I am more than likely going to be able to start stream much earlier, like 12 o'clock my time. It's like three hours earlier, but. <sighs> we'll see. Okay, version. Where's the, the second thing that I change? Is it this? Oh, yep, there it is. Version 5. Yeah, this beta we're putting out is super important because people are going to be testing out all the fit area stuff for me. It's going to be my last chance for good feedback on... or any bugs that people can find, so... Okay, right. Now, the, the challenge with these areas is going to be, obviously, I don't want to design them like this. Okay? But at the same time, I want to design them looking like this. Does that make sense? Because like, I want to be able to see how they look. But the player's always going to have a light around him. So, let's set some things up here. Okay? How the heck is this thing still off? Hive sack? What's wrong with you, dude? Okay. We have the three walls. Perfect. Do we have a door to the temple? Door temple. Perfect. We do. Probably going to change the logo of it. I don't know. Just looks a little... Interesting. This is level five underscore nothing. We have the temple wall. Okay, I think that's good. I'm probably gonna keep this, the temple wall. This is cool because the temple, we can, for the, this is gonna be one of the first areas where it's like going underground is gonna be feasible for level design. So we're gonna have some cool levels. Um. Also, my friends are freaking out about 
uh, Steam's new thing. Interesting, so it seems to me so that multiple people can use a library at once. Anyways, that's cool. Before, if you wanted to play a game in, in library share on, on Steam, only one person could be using it. But now, I guess they're trying to do a system where, like, multiple people can be using your library at once as long as you're all playing different games sounds like there's no drawbacks i'll be honest seems pretty dope okay so this animation here is off and i would like to know why i think i do know why actually i think it's because i mess with the position here okay so give me the light 2d all we got to do here is just align it, and this should be the last time we have to do this. Be negative 32.5. No, negative 32. But this is negative 0.5. There we go. Nice and aligned. Why does this look so off? Light 2D scale, scale. Yeah, when nothing's scaled, they all look fine. But right here, yeah, something does not look right. Scale of this is one. Scale of this is one. Scale of this is 1.2 and 1.1. Scale of that is 1.1 and 1.2. They should be fine. This is kind of weird. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's just not aligned. Looks like it's not. Ooh, it's kind of weird. I really don't like how they're off. It kind of really throws me. Because like this, it's just not ever going to align properly. Like they're different sizes. <laughs> so one way to fix this. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to show what's happening here. So we have the glow and then we have the actual pustules. Okay, this is the glow and this is the pustules. The glow here. Wow, it is actually in the same exact spot. So we actually shouldn't be having this issue. Okay, back to the drawing board. I was trying to explain something. Turns out I'm just wrong. Light 2D, position, 0 0.5 and negative 28. Sprite, position, 0, negative What if instead of, of changing the scale here, right? You know, what if instead I just stuck you, the light here, on the sprite? Texture scale, you're normal, you're one. Oh, maybe you shouldn't be. Why are you 0 0.9, 0 0.9? <laughs> I don't know why all these are different scales when they shouldn't be. Your scale, you're normal. Holy crap. Okay, so now that they're both normal scaled, normally scaled, they should line up. Looks like they will if the position isn't so scuffed, 0.5, negative 0.5. Thank you, save it, ship it. Now it glows and stretches correctly, perfect. That was a weird one, back. It's now set up correctly, perfect. 
Okay, so. Whew. Flame holders, you're good. So every level is going to have flame holders. Every level is going to have a chest. Every level is going to have these pustules. So let's just have two of them on deck here. Pustule small and pustule large. We're going to have random enemy spawner, but let's make sure that they're all empty enemies. Let's set it up right. Nice kiwi. Bit of late stream, innit? Oh my. Isn't it a bit late for you? Right, I think it's like... Actually, didn't we do this last time? Isn't it only like 11.30 or 12 your time? I mean, only, right? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I went to work. I tried to... I tried to work as fast as I could today and get home and stream as fast as I could. And so this is probably the new time. But I'm like, dude, that sucks. So we'll see. I, I do want to start waking up early. I've said that like the past five streams, but I always sleep in. It's 10? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I want to wake up early and stream so that people who... Uh, yeah who tune in to, who can't tune in this late can watch earlier so is your job one where if you finish early you leave early yeah my job isn't really like nine to five <laughs> it's just i mean i just i get a list of of like this is literally what my day it is not how it normally is but like this is like Utah, roughly, like all the cities, okay? If we were looking at a giant map, every, everywhere else out here is like not city areas, okay? All right. In the great beyond. Okay, my work, they exist way up here, okay? And the majority of that work takes place in the red zone. The problem is, as they started to expand, they got some people over here in the orange zone. And this is super far to drive. I live like right here. So like my workplace has like a bunch of people, but they all just work up here. And I mean, they go way, way, way up north, but they needed someone to cover all down here. So like, I don't actually, like I go into work. I literally just go to like a barn, pull out a work van. I print out a sheet and the sheet every day. I just get a new sheet and it's like, Hey, here's person number one, two, three, four, five, like, you need to go spray these people's properties with pesticides. Once I'm done, I literally just drive back and then I'm done. I don't interact with any other human beings. I don't have a boss. I just, I handle this area for them. I literally do this. I do check marks as I finish them off. So some days I have, like today I had 13 people, right? Actually kind of a lot, kind of sucked. But tomorrow I have five people right the next day i haven't looked but like you know it could change some days i think the biggest day i ever had was 27 people that sucked i'm too dead brain this sounds like a good simulator oh my goodness yeah it's pesticides so 13 could be easier than five depending on their locations that's true the 13th today they were like right next to my space and they were all super like right next to each other and they were pretty small houses and like tomorrow i'm going even further south like off this grid and i gotta do five but they're all like huge like houses out in the middle of nowhere they're all like el cob barns they're <laughs> cabins i mean they're all like el cob cabins way down south and so yeah this five could probably take me the same time but either way yeah it's like i could if i finish i go home and so i can work slow or I could work fast. And today, like, I worked really fast. And I still... I think I got off work at, like, 1. Then I came home. And I helped my wife out. Um, I mean, we just had, like, some chores and stuff. And Anyways. But, like... You know? Anyways. I, I think I've explained it. I've over-explained it. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, ideally... And because it's, like, a slow startup, right? Like, I'm, like... 
you don't like the middle of the summer is when everyone wants bugs taken care of but right now when it's just starting there's a lot of people who don't so like ideally when i did this i was like oh like it it shouldn't be it should only be like three or four hour days because like we're just barely starting up and not like longer days pesticide simulator 2025 is my next game oh my gosh I do want to stick a, an item in the Feathered Serpent that is a pesticide item. I think it'd be funny. It just does a little throwback. A little nod. Okay. Let me set up everything I need for these levels. Excuse me? Yeah, these levels are going to be fun because we can play with around so much with going down into levels. Which is just gonna be sick. Like we're gonna do some some cool levels. Um, in fact, that being said, maybe, maybe, just maybe, we actually start the first ten levels. We do something like this, just to help me when I'm creating the levels. So that I can like carve away um, and do cool like tunneling systems. Uh, okay, so one thing I do need to do is is the control. Yeah, the control node here. Okay, it's actually aligned pretty well. Save it. Let's fill in this area up here. Give me the pustules and the sack. Stick them out here. Give me a random enemy spawner. That can be right here. We have the door to the temple. Perfect. Um, what else do I need in here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this area was going to consist as well as having this tile map. I was going to add in a secondary tile map. Um... Yeah, and this second tile map. Hold on, hold on. I actually created a node and not keyed in my own tile map. As magic tile map, sorry. Tile map, tile map. But it's fun. I'm not gonna lie, my job's fun. Like, I mean, like, I, I don't hate it. It just isn't what I want to do the rest of my life. Yeah, I want these these rocks in in the temple area. So I actually could do something cool like <laughs> Maybe I do something like this. Like yeah, once I get too high or too low, it starts turning into rocks. Yeah, that's cool. How many was that? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, wait. One. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is gonna be cool. But yeah, just this idea of like, yeah, like it's it's a temple, but then there's also like the these like rocks and it's kinda like grungy on the inside and It'll just be cool. Alright, let's fill you in there. Fill you in there. Perfect. We have the right chest. We have the canvas modulate. And... You know what? That's perfect. Let's go ahead and get our, our different... Um, are different traps so we want saw blade momentum and maybe I can just create these in the actual thing I don't need to actually have them here dino time you actually redeemed dino time oh my goodness Co. well it's dinosaur time
All right, dinosaur time. Courtesy of Co. Everyone. Let me get Crumb in on this, because part of it is we have to teach Crumb. Crumb. All right, Crumb, are you ready for this, buddy? I don't think you're ready for this, Crumb. All right. Okay, Crumb. Are you ready for this, Crumb? Let me. Ugh. It's dinosaur time, Crumb. You gotta learn about your ancestors. So. Let's see. Let me teach you, Crumb. What do we, who do we want to learn about? Crumb! Crumb! A eudemorphodon. Look at that, everyone. There you go, Co. Crumb? This is who you should aspire to be, Crumb. Do you see it? Are you freaking out? Look at it, Crumb. This is wh this is who you are. This is your ancestry. Crumb? Take notes. Okay. So, Let's learn about this thing. What does you you dimorphodon mean? You oh you dimorphodon. How, that's how you say it. Named for its multi cusped and differentiated teeth. Yeah, crumb. Take notes. I know you can understand me. All right. It says that there's three different vertebrate groups have evolved flight: birds, bats, and pterosaurs. Birds and bats are still alive today and are two of the largest and most diverse groups of vertebrates. Pterosaurs are long extinct but were an important evolutionary success. These strange archosaurs, archosaurs, archosaurs were the first vertebrates to take to the air and dominated the skies long before birds and bats existed. The first pterosaur fossils are known from the late Triassic, some 30 million years before the oldest bird fossils. Archaeopteryx. I did not know that birds didn't Came after dinosaur birds? Crumb! Crumb! This guy taught you how to. This guy was the first flyer, Crumb. Anyways. You die morphodon. What else we got going on? Even after the evolution of birds, pterosaurs remained diverse and dominant until their extinction alongside the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Crumb, that's the difference? Hey, Crumb, listen to me. You survived the extinction, Crumb. Budge riggers? Better than eudimorphodons. Okay. The skeleton of pterosaurs is finely adapted for flight. Its most surprising feature is the elongated fourth finger of the hand. Oh, what the freak? In some species, the finger is nearly as long as the entire body. This stretched finger, along with the unique bone in the wrist called the pteroid, helped to support an extensive wing. Unlike the wing of birds, which is comprised of individual feathers, the aerofoil of pterosaurs was more of a broad sheet, stretching forth from the fourth finger and connected to the body. Other specializations for flight include a shoulder socket that faced outwards, which helped the wings swing through a, a broad flight stroke, and extremely hollowed bones which lie in the animal. Okay, look at this fourth finger there. Hold on. You see this thing? Hold on. That, oh. That's its finger, bro. That's a finger. Okay, think about that. What a cool dinosaur. All right. Eudimorphodon is one of the oldest known pterosaurs. Several fossils have been discovered near Bergamo, a mid-sized city close to Milan in northern Italy. The fossil of a very young individual has also been reported from Greenland. Eudimorphodon is distinguished from other pterosaurs by its complex teeth, 
which have several small points called cusps and its long thin tail. It is a relatively small animal. Especially compared with Cretaceous pterosaurs such as Quetzalcoatlus. Not planned, but they name dropped. Okay, they name dropped. Whose wingspan of up to 39 feet was larger than that of many small planes. Crumb. One more time, Crumb. This is the goal. This is who you need to aspire to be, Crumb. Look at this thing. Okay. There it is. This is how big it is to a human. It's pretty big. Pretty big. All right, Crumb. That's all it says, buddy. That's all it says. I hope you had a good time, Crumb. And I hope you learned something, Co. Thank you for redeeming Dino Time. I will now get back to actually reading chat. <clears throat> I like your pog better than TBH focus. I don't know what that means, Co. It's like the Wright Brothers of your people, Crumb. That's a good point, Crumb. Thanks to my actual crested gecko's head, at least the top half. Oh, I love it. Oh, you were saying, oh, that's a dope pog. Oh, and then you took the bottom of the normal pog. That's cool. Um, I know a random fact. The holification of bones is called pneumotization. Interesting. Maybe spelled slightly differently. That's crazy. Don't encourage him. You can't afford to feed a burb that big. <laughs> In a few weeks, Sundown will be feeding Crumb out of fear and showing pictures of farmhouse birds. I know. Crumb, wait, Crumb. This is who you're supposed to be. Cut it out, Crumb. I don't know. He seems like he, he was looking at the bird. I'm I'm serious. Crumb was actually looking at the page, like up and down, like holy crap. Anyways, that's Dino time. You're the first person to redeem it, Co. I think it's because people didn't know what it was. But now you know. Co says a friend of mine showed me a wild picture recently. Right. Uh. Let's see it. His friend's dog got addicted to bird videos on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Got addicted to bird videos. Okay, so these first five levels, we're going to make them pretty much bug themed. Or the first ten levels. The next ten levels, we'll pick a theme and we'll stick with it. And we'll, we'll put in the things that we want over here. But one thing that I want is spikes in, in every area. Temple spikes. In addition to whatever else that there may be. Um, hold on. Did I ever create a trap? I really like trap door mechanics. And they are going to fit right in with the temple area. So we absolutely need the trap door a trapdoor that fits in with a temple theme, which we can make in two seconds. Um, I believe it's it's probably in World City. It's not in World City. Where trapdoor or yeah, no door. No, I definitely call it trapdoor. Hmm. Maybe I call it trap wall, actually. I definitely call it trap wall. Okay, where is this from? Oh, it's in city enemies. Interesting. Okay, city enemies, trap. Pressure plate. Trap wall. Okay. Give me these. We got to create new ones here. And we'll do something like this. Wow. All the tips are touching. It is what it is. Okay. 
Just wanted to look a little sharper. Not so dull. Just these little changes will help sell the fact that, oh, this is different. I'm in a new area. Cool. Okay. We're approaching escape velocity. Please. Yeah, we do something like that. Cool. Maybe this is where we actually... Yeah, we... We do something like this. Okay. I dig it. So it opens up. Um, Sorry, let's see here. I was not reading chat. 11 get channel points, you're close, Kiwi. Can we get upset whenever he played games and disrupted his bird time? What the heck? So now you set up a laptop, his dedicated bird watching station, and the dog just sits inches away from the screen watching birds all day? Dude, he's an iPad dog. I used to play videos for your dogs howling for... Oh, oh, okay, hold on. I used to play videos of dogs howling for my dogs all the time. It drove them half crazy at first, but they got tired of it when they couldn't smell the dogs. Oh. They even put an A4 sheet on the keyboard to stop the drool. Oh my gosh. I, I would, so I, I stuck crumb in front of the TV one time, huge TV, and then I put on bird videos, but then crumb kept flying into the TV, like he, it would, t it would be a wide shot of all these birds, and then crumb would like fly out of his cage, hit the TV, and then fly back, like he didn't understand, he was trying to fly into it like a Mario painting. That's a good idea for a trap kiwi. A whole room of flies. I actually dig that, and that's super easy to implement. Heck yeah, now we're talking. Let me just make sure this pressure pad is looking good. Let's do something like this. I'll make it completely colored. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's just make sure that they're colored the same color as the temple. So for that, we'll go world temple. Oh, not that. That's an old, that's a relic for sure. That's really old. Give me this. So we'll do this. Nice. Yeah, we're going to get some cool looking colors here. There we go. And then probably you want to give it some like blues and stuff. I guess first let me... Let me do that. And then you step on it, and then, nice. Okay, but I definitely want some of these golds to be shining through, right? So we have, like, these these squares here that seem like per the perfect uh, opportunity to put in these colors. Yeah, something like that. Nice. And then as these compress, we can compress everything else. And then I'll probably do diamonds, like a diamond color as well in the other square. Hey, Simon. How's the streams been going, dude? What's up? Uh, 
Uh, Wubdub, hello. Hope you're doing well, dude. Long time no see. Post a new video on your game jam and it got 88 views in the first hour, but then today it's almost like it reset the views back to four. What do you mean? There's nothing to fix, dude? It just is it is. They are going well. I'm at 2.5 average concurrent viewers. So close. Heck yeah, dude. I don't know, sometimes, that I don't know what's up with YouTube stuff, but it doesn't always work out, and that's not, like, a cause for alarm, you know? That just is like, oh, it just didn't work out. I think that's fine. Like, oh, no, it bugged. Oh, well, like, move on. <laughs> you know? On it, that's just my take, because, like, dude, I don't have time to worry about any of that stuff. So I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff. Does that make sense? extend this out so that it fits a little bit better I like the yellows in here is there any way I can incorporate some of these blues there should be yeah, like genuinely there there should be like a yeah we can do this Oh, do I want a diamond in the middle? A diamond in the rough. Sure. It'll look cool. And then that means I can make this blue. Probably. Okay, these are starting to get squished. So that gets squished. It's probably goodbye. For that well maybe we do that this is still diamond colored okay yeah I think we just get rid of these still diamond colored still diamond colored okay perfect now we just have to render those those diamond colors monolith is the most annoying boss to fight in your opinion yeah, I agree. Wait, so you... Have you been having a pretty easy time then fighting Gorgos? Is he not that hard to fight? That's, in, that's definitely interesting to me. Yo. Simon, my dude. Keep up the good work, dude. Like, seriously. If I could push a button that says go back to your age, I would. Well... Maybe I wouldn't, but... But, like, genuinely, yeah, like, I wish I had, like, stuck with game dev. Like, and taking, taking it more seriously when I was younger. Absolutely. Million, billion, kajillion percent. Gorgos is easier than Monolith using sword. No way, using the sword? Yeah, Monolith, I agree, is pretty hard. Do you think he's, it's too hard, though, Webdub? Like, should I work on, like, maybe balancing that out? Or, yeah, is it, like, is it getting to the point where it's like, ah, uh, he's, like, hard in, like, not a fun way? Because, you know what I mean? There's, there's a difference between, like, this is hard and, like, uh, yeah, this, like, sucks. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm, I'm staying away from the realm of suckage. Alright, something like this. Now, they still look a little strange, and that is because they need this. They need, like, an outline. Yeah, they can't just exist. Perfect. 
Perfect. Yeah, we're going to get some cool variations here because of this. Oh yeah, now we got a cool design going on too. Yeah, this is gonna be sick. It's gonna be real cool. Almost nice. There it is. Okay. Um, also, I'm not that old. You still have time to get subs? Are you complimenting my school for my vids new quality? Heck yeah. Oh yeah, you told me you got like new mics and new camera and stuff. That's awesome. Um, might need a balance because it feels like walking on a tightrope after walking across a <sighs> that hard web dub dang because with the sword when you're fighting monolith there's no spikes right which I thought hey maybe that makes it feel better or maybe that makes it easier but yeah no if, it's, if it feels like that then yeah heck no it's not good Yeah, something like this. This looks pretty cool, actually, for, like, an opening and closing. It definitely fits with the temple. So now we can go, hey, put this into enemies, trap wall, or temple enemies, temple trap wall. I'm just going to call it trap wall temple. We go PNG, 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 PNG. Save. Now give me this. We'll save. We'll go. Uh, what did I just call? What did, what did I say? Pressure plate temple. Save it as a PNG. Save. Now the cool thing is, I can just change this in code, and I can actually just use the old trap wall. And it won't look like it fits, but it will fit. Because I'll just change it in code. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, we want a trap wall, at least one trap wall in every area as well. But then, and you're still playing on version 2.0? Oh, that's an old version, Wubdub. Dang, you know you can download a new one, right? It is what it is. Alright, let's, let's cook. Crumb, what do you do? He's currently on the side of his cage, which is why you guys can't see him. Crumb, hey, can you go back in your cage, buddy? Crumb? Oh, no? You're going to stay outside your cage? Okay. He's actually just hanging on the side of his cage. Which version is out now? 4.2. 4.2 is out. And version 5.0 is going out tonight. So, 5.0 is going to have the fifth area here. So, lots of cool stuff. Okay. So, this is primed and ready for, for level making. All right, Crumb. Are you coming back in your cage? Yeah? No? Crumb? You got to get in your cage? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna let's let's start making some levels. So we're gonna go level five. I think I'd like to also include. Well, no, these are good. 
it is enough traps like these and this that's that's a good amount of traps honestly let's duplicate this well it's level five one oh here we go into the level making wow this is kind of surreal level five two we're making the fifth the fifth area levels Level five, three. Level five, four. Level five, five. Ah, shucks, I gotta learn a whole new area. This area should be the most fun and hardest, but most fun, I think. Like I really am aiming for fun in this area. Like, the, uh, honestly, if I had to rank my areas, uh, area, I would say that my first area is the best, still. I don't know about my fifth area, I don't know how it feels. But just in ways of playing with areas, first area, that's the best. Then I'd put fourth area, I really like how the fourth area is shaped up. Then... Oh... Uh, it's close, but I actually think I'd go. Uh, it's like a toss up between the second and third area for me. There are things I really like about both of them, but then things I really don't like about both of them. It just in terms of like which ones that I, I personally think are like the best, most well done, most fun. First area still tops everything. So demo still is the most goaded uh, version of my game. Honestly, the demo is sick. The fact that you can go infinite plus and do stuff like that, I think that's so sick. Okay, five, one. Ooh, the first temple area. You know what we gotta do? We gotta get some, like, Spelunky. I gotta get in the zone, I'm telling you right now. Spelunky temple music. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Let's get it. Let's get it. And got to lock in now. We're locking in. I am. I'm going to create like two or three levels just to get a feel for how a level is. And then I'll start putting a timer on the screen and I'm going to start doing these levels timed. But I got to kind of figure out how that's going to look first. So. Let me pick our temple tile set here. We spawn in here. I mean, immediately, I just, I think most of these levels should be down, like going down. Like, whoa, there's a tunnel system. Like, I just, I just think it's sick. Then I should be able to... Yeah, okay. Okay, okay! So yeah, what can I what can I actually do here? Like I said, I need I need to figure out like the flow and like how these areas look and feel before I can uh you know really yeah and you know what one thing that i actually do want to do i want a crumbling platform for this area i really like crumbling platforms and i know we have one for the ruins area yeah do hold on hold on in my platforms object sorry let me just okay it's not a good looking platform i was gonna say i have this but that's eh. so this is what we're gonna do how many frames is this this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve it looks like 12 frames let me double check Or breaking platforms, what we call them. Breaking 
platform for the city. How many frames are you? You're 12 frames. Okay. So check this out. We take this. We create a new. I'm going to make this so quick. You're not even going to know what hits you. Give me the... Oh, where did I save it? Is it in caves? Oh my gosh, it's in caves. Interesting. Hey, dude, welcome back, Frost. I was just gonna say, dude, I, I feel you with the, like, dishes and, and chores. I'm like, oh my gosh. If I don't do it, it never gets done. <laughs> Which, I'm not saying that in, like, necessarily, like, a negative way, like, ah, oh, freaking, I'm mad. It's more just, like, like, I understand why, because, like, my wife's freaking pregnant, and she doesn't feel good, like, 90% of the time. So, it's like, yeah, I'm totally comfortable and capable of, like, uh, helping out more, especially at this point. But, it sucks when there's not a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> and the other person is just like, you're just like, okay, are you going to do anything or, or what? <laughs> All right. So this is looking decent. Yeah, I think the only thing I don't like is the light on the bottom of these. Yeah, it's looking a, a tad bit better. Yeah, we'll do some of this. Just cleaning this up. I know that we shrunk it down, but we can still do some touch-ups here and there, right? Something like that. So that's looking pretty icy now. Now we just animate that breaking. Such levels could theoretically be constructed as a series of corridors leading to rooms, and there could be holes in the entire level, imitating collapsed rooms and corridors. Oh, that's actually, like, yeah, for sure, like, a, a super, super great idea. So, like, yeah, it's like a corridor that leads into, like, a bigger room, right? Like, this is, like, a wall, and then, like, the thing is, this is, like, way too... Like, this is, like, way too, like... Yeah, well done here. It would look like this. You fall down. You walk forward. And then, yeah, it totally could, like, open up into... Like, maybe you drop down and it opens up into, like, a whole other room down here. Yeah, I could totally see super cool stuff like this. Like, super sick stuff. Yo, what's up? What's good? So you'd like drop down like right here into a whole room. Yeah, we can do sick stuff here. And then, yeah, there's like a pressure pad that you have to step down here to open up like a door. Oh, yeah, this is cool. I think part of the issue is we're all adults, so they feel like, why should I have to ask or do it when there are other adults here? Which is why one person of four people won't take the trash out, do the dishes, clean the bathroom, or anything else, which then bothers me. And then the other person who is sick right now, that usually does those things. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, definitely, like, yeah. It's, there's conversations to be had, for sure. Like, I, I totally know the feeling. I've lived with, uh, like, like, roommates with other dudes before. And it sucks when they don't, like, do anything. That being said, one way that I try and, and like, kind of get over myself, because at the end of the day, it is what it is, is it's, like, I don't know why I'm opening up a new tab. I'm just saying, like, I, like, man, no one does the dishes. No one takes out the trash. Like, if I didn't live with anyone, I would have to do all the dishes and take out all the trash every single time, you know? So I, that's just what I tell myself. And I know that there's arguments against it. I'm just saying it helps me reframe it in a way that's better. Like, you know what? Yeah. Like, if I was living by myself, I would still have to do these things. And it's like, I, sh I shouldn't even expect the other people to, to do X, Y, or Z. Uh, one thing that I do need to do here that I, I should have done and didn't is actually align these two tile sets. 
Yeah. There we go. Where's Crumb? Okay, Crumb. Okay, he was crawling on the side of his cage. He's shifted now. Maybe I gotta switch the camera because he's he's picked a new favorite spot. He's right next to the camera. He's he's smiling. There you go. There's Crumb. I think that's the part I would be fine if it's just me because three fourths of the dishes. Yeah, you're right. That's the thing. I told you, Froster, and there's arguments against it because you're right. It's like, yeah, other people create more dishes than there would have been otherwise. Like, dude, I get it. 100%, dude. You're right. But <laughs> it's just not helpful for me to think that way. It's helpful for me to kind of tell myself the lie of like, dude, I'd be doing this anyways. I might as well just do it, you know? That's all I'm saying. It's like, yeah, okay. Like... I can do this because I'd be doing it anyways. I get a feeling the camera is going to be a, a battle of hide and seek with Crumb. Maybe. Crumb! You're doing good, right? Oh, I'm not taking a break yet. Hi! Camera seems a little strange, Crumb. Okay, that's even worse. Let me just... I mean, he, you are pretty backlit right now, which makes sense, right? But... I don't see a way of this working out for me, Crumb. Maybe something like that, Crumb. You look beautiful. All right, there you are, Crumb. Fair enough, yeah. Good luck. Thank you, Luca. Dude, I appreciate that. Best of luck with your project, too, dude. I know you've been grinding with me, so. Burke, hey, thank you for the follow. All right. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I need to animate this breaking because this is going to be an integral part of the, uh, of the process here. So I'm going to go every other here. It's pretty simple. I mean, we just slowly, very slowly. I just start pulling these down. I just feel like this is this is turning into conversation rife for being clipped out of context. So calm down. All right. But yeah, just some some breakage what we're going for wow it looks beautiful and we want them to start falling at like different speeds so as you can see some of these I'm pushing down two some I'm pushing down three these ones like I'm gonna push that one down two I'm gonna push this one down one I'm gonna push this one down one I'm gonna push this down two I'm gonna push this one down one like just trying to make it seem a little more haphazard-ish. This one, I could, I could do two. And then, yeah, at this point, maybe I, I start sinking like this middle one, right? Next, we keep it going. Now, now, we start shrinking them though, right? As you get closer and closer to the bottom here, we get some shrink shrinkage. On both the vertical axis and non-vertical axis. Boom. And we just got to make sure that this ends on 12 frames. That's pretty much all we got to do. 
because that's how many frames the other ones are. Um, but no, Frostern, actually, you got my brain, like, cooking now. I just want to, like, talk about it, because I don't know necessarily know if it's right, but I like this, this train of thought a lot. The idea that, like, you should judge thoughts, not based on whether or not, because there's different kinds of truth, is the idea. And so, like, some truths aren't helpful. And so, like... At that point, like, why choose to believe that truth, even if it's not, like, helpful? Like, for example, I think I had gotten into this before, but someone told me that, like, 97% of indie games fail, or 96% of indie games fail, or are market failures, and it's like, that's not a truth that, like, does me any good at all. Like, that's just gonna make me feel anxious, that's just gonna make me feel bad, that's gonna make me doubt myself, and... By when I start doubting myself and feeling bad and and all that, it's like that's gonna affect how the, like the final product of my game turns out. So it's kind of like a self fulfilling prophecy if I choose to believe that, even if it's statistically true. So like, there's different realms of like what is true, right? Because it's like that's not a helpful truth, so I'm like, there's no point in believing it, because in by believing it, I'm more likely to manifest that. Whereas if I don't believe it, I'm more likely to create a successful game and like become a market success. Uh, but the other idea, and, and I know people are like, yeah, well, you can argue against that all you want, but I think a really strong argument for it is the uh, argument for guns in the sense of when you're holding a gun, you always treat it like it's loaded. Logically, I can know ex I can buy a brand new gun. I can check the chamber. I can check everything, and I know it's not loaded. I can know for a fact. And there's different kinds of truth, and they operate differently. Because if someone came to me and they said, "Hey, I'll give you a million dollars if that gun isn't loaded, right, uh, or has no like no bullets in it," I was like, "Okay, yeah, I'm a, I'm 100% confident. Like, yeah, give me the million dollars. It's not loaded." That being said. I still am going to treat that gun, even though I, I'm willing to, to bet everything on it not being loaded, I am still going to adhere to and obey the principle of, hey, I'm going to treat this gun as if it is loaded. And so there are other truths that aren't that, that also apply in people's lives where it's like, hey, even though we can logically prove that this is not true, we are going to act as if it is because that actually does save lives, right? That's the whole point of the whole gun thing of, oh, yeah, treat it like it's always loaded because in the 1% of situations, you know, where someone makes a mistake, hey, it just saves someone's life. So it's a very cool. That's a, anyways. So the whole thing about like uh, that you were saying, Froster, and about or that I was saying, I guess, about like doing dishes and how, yeah, technically like. Yeah, like, those aren't your dishes or whatever. It's like, is it a helpful truth? Right? No, because then you just start resenting your roommates, and then you don't want to do the chores, and then, you know. Anyways, it's just a cool, it's a cool realm of truth. When I, I, I felt like I matured <laughs> when I realized that. Like, oh, wow. There are truths that everyone believes that are not based in logic that are actually helpful that we all adhere to and agree that we should continue to adhere to. It kind of really opens up like a can of worms in regards to like, oh, what am I willing to call truth and not truth? Because it's not just about, is this thing actually logical? Anyways, I'll, I'll get off my freaking soapbox here. Um, Trevron. Hey, welcome. Statistically, there are a lot of trash games, though. Been lurking a lot lately. Your game looks dope. Hey, thank you. I'm glad you've been lurking, dude. Game's coming out soon. I agree with you. I mean... Usually when someone says, uh, when, when they complain, like, oh, my game, it didn't sell well, or, like, I don't understand. I can, I know within, like, two seconds of looking at their game, I'm like, yeah, I know why. Like, I'm not being mean. You can just look at someone's game and be like, oh, yeah, like, I can tell why your game didn't sell well. Like, it's because of X, Y, and Z, you know? 
Uh, maybe that's how you and me view the dishes. We do it because if we were alone, we would anyway. And I guess this means they won't if they were the only one. Yep. But yeah, I think there's the recently in the game dev scene, there's like this huge controversy over this chick who like got upset because EA like dumped a bunch of their games, their old catalog of games, and it screwed her indie launch over. But then like she's now a huge success because I mean her video went viral. But then I like look at her game and I'm like, like the, the criticism is because people look at her game and they're like, hey, this is trash. Like that's what the whole controversy is right now. And like, here's another thing in, in the whole topic of truth, just cause something's true, right? Quote unquote true, right? It's a fact or whatever. Does not mean that that needs to be expressed, okay? So for example, okay, uh, I'm fine opening up about this. Me and my wife went through a rough time, okay? And I sat down and I was like, yeah, like statistically because of X, like because of X, Y, and Z, we have like, I think I said like, we have like a 97% chance of getting divorced. I just said that, but it's like, I mean, we worked through it, but I'm just saying like, it's like, that's not like, that's not a good truth to say in the moment, even if statistically and logically that's true. Cause like that doesn't help anyone. It doesn't make you feel good. And so like someone's game could suck, like actually suck, but that's not a, that's not a, a helpful truth. So the best way to illustrate this is with little kids. A little kid draws you a drawing. You don't take the kid's drawing and say, dude, this is a piece of garbage. And honestly, if we're all being honest, it is. Uh, you look at a kid's drawing, dude, their proportions are off. It looks like freaky. Like they suck at art, dude. Every kid, every little kid sucks at art, but you don't look at them and say, dude, you suck at art. It's like, nah, 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 dude. That's a truth technically, but it's, it's just so unhelpful for everyone involved that it's not even worth saying. And so you can still encourage people like, Hey, yeah. Like you could totally improve your game with X, Y, and Z instead of just relentlessly bashing someone's project or whatever, you know? Anyways, I think I've, I've, uh, pfft, spoken enough. But anyways, that's kind of how I like to view the world. It's like, yeah, like, you gotta know, like, when to say things, when to not say things. Who's your target audience? What's the context? Because all of those things are gonna change what, what truth is the best truth in that situation. Is it the logical truth? Is it the truth that anyone can make games or anyone can get to a point where they're good? How come I think all babies look ugly until they're a few months old? That's another one. Everyone's like, they're so cute. Yeah, El Cop, you're so true. If, if we were being honest, babies look freaking weird, right? But yeah, you're not gonna go tell someone, dude, your baby's ugly, because then they're not gonna talk to you. What, okay, hold on. What a great sentence to get rated on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Zombie UK, for the raid. Welcome, everyone. We are working on a crumbling animation here. I think it's actually done. I think that's probably good. Uh, yeah, my game launches pretty soon. Uh, welcome, welcome. I timed my comment perfectly. That was really funny. Hey, hey, welcome. Mr. Zombie UK, how'd you, how was your stream? How did it go? I wonder if I should do this. You know what? I'm going to take all of this. <laughs> I'll just re-outline it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Oh, what the heck? Wait, delete, shift outline on the outside. Thank you. Okay, that's what we want. Oh man, you're going in circles trying to figure out something, but you managed to achieve something small. We've all been there, brother. I'm glad you figured it out. It's the small things that matter. Let's go temple enemies. Let's go breaking rock platform. 
I have no idea what to call it. It's good enough. PNG save. All right, breaking, city breaking platform. Let's duplicate this and let's call this rock breaking platform. Dave H, good afternoon. Love the pixel art. Thank you. I also love pixel art. So we're working on the final area in my game. I'm kind of real tight with the deadline here. But basically we're inside this cult dinosaur temple. Okay. It'll be lit up like this in game and the player has a light around them. But just for the purposes of level design, I kind of need to see what the freak I'm doing. Excited for the official release? Thank you, dude. Me too. Trevron, I think it is a problem with the community. Naturally, a lot of powered by numbers folks in programming development. They can be good information to know the realistic situation, but just like with art, criticism shouldn't be applied frivolously. Totally, Trevron. Took the words out of my mouth, dude. Y'all are much more eloquent than me. Yeah, but they're like 40 plus posts on Steam every day. You gotta expect that. Yeah. Frustrating can be hard sometimes to know the moment, the, the right thing to say or the best way to word it. True, but I all I feel like, yeah, I think while it's hard to know the best thing to say in any given situation, it's pretty easy to know what not to say in any given situation, you know? It's like, oh man, like, like one thing I struggle with is when someone like a loved one passes away, I'm like, I have no idea how to console you, right? Uh, but my personal belief is that whatever you believe in, right? reincarnation uh heaven uh whatever when a when a, a loved one dies that is not the time to reassure someone with any ideology i've it has always bugged me whenever someone dies and like oh they're in heaven it's okay it's like not the right thing to say dude you can say that shiz in like a month but like you know in any given situation i definitely feel like there's things where it's like hey we can all agree you probably shouldn't say that in the moment so even if I don't know what the right thing to say is, usually I just like keep my mouth shut because I'm like, hey, you know what? <laughs> I know what pisses me off and I'm not going to do that to you. So <laughs> anyways, <laughs> and when you, when you rated me, Mr. Zombie UK, we were talking about ugly babies and how most newborns are very ugly <laughs> and that's not the right thing to say to uh, a mother of a newborn. Chatty is what's up kids might suck at art, but give them the courage and appreciation. They'll become great artists. Totally. That's another thing. When someone shows me something on stream, I understand like the idea of wanting to be authentic and be like, oh, hey, that's not good. And like, there's value in criticism, but like, dude, most of the people watch my stream. I'm like, I just want you to like go and make stuff. I don't care if it sucks, you know? So absolutely. I'm going to like only say like nice, positive things. Like I don't want to just take like a hot dump all over like whatever you sent me even if it even if it's absolute dog water i don't want to you know i don't want to be rude to you like that and that's not me being disingenuous that's me you know recognizing the context and wanting to encourage rather than tear down anyways mel bell what's up there's some babies that never grow out of the ugly oh okay that's a truth that we maybe we keep to ourselves speaking of <laughs> Mr. Zombie UK, I was an ugly baby. I was Yoda for weeks until they actually decided that they liked me. <laughs> are you sure that's a human baby? Did you get a DNA test? There are actually... Okay, hold on. I've seen some baby pictures out there where I actually am like, dude, that's like a... That's that's not a human. That doesn't look right. You can give constructive criticism without being a dick too. True. But also like... I know for me personally, and this is just me, I have huge, huge problem with ego and pride. I admit it. So, like, when I show my wife something I've cooked up on stream all day, and instead of her being like, oh, that's so cool, if she just right out the gates says something like, oh, that looks a little off though right there. Maybe you could consider doing this. Like, my gut reaction is just like, frick off. Like, but I didn't think frick. You know, and so it's like, I got to kind of like, you know maybe that's why i'm a, i i i'm a little more cautious when it comes to other people because i know how i take criticism after i've worked on something and i usually it hits home so hard because i'm like you know what you're freaking right but it's like i don't want to i don't want to know that in the moment i don't know <laughs> what a fun conversation 
Anyways. Yeah, we're just experimenting on this level here. And then I usually like to time myself so that I can get a lot done when it comes to levels. So... But I'm just trying to figure out what the actual process for a level looks like in this area. Because I've never made any any levels in here. So yeah, like I'm just trying to see like, okay, what, what looks good? What's the theme? Does, is having some of this temple wall breaking away, is that like a good move here? Seems like it's kind of cool. Hmm. Like maybe I do that or something. Uh, I look back at the pics of my son as a newborn and I think, yikes. Oh my goodness. But I think if someone is seeking feedback, it is different. Sure, if someone says, hey, actually tell me what's wrong with this. And depending on the relationship, like, there are a couple of people that I am, like, very comfortable with now. And, like, if they send me something, I'll just be like, yeah, man, like, no, that's not it, chief. You know, like, we gotta, you gotta take that one back to the drawing boards. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. What kind of game is this? Side scroll, I assume? Yeah, I was, let me, sorry, I, I got so lost in the sauce of the conversation. Let me show you a trailer of the game here. It's been a while, but we'll do this. So, hey, this is my game. It's called The Feathered Serpent. It's called The Feathered Serpent because it is based off of Aztec mythology. Quetzalcoatl, he is the main god of the Aztec pantheon. And Quetzalcoatl means the feathered serpent. So this game is like the Binding of Isaac if it were a platformer. So every single run is randomized. The game is meant to be replayed and you're supposed to get different combos and different runs. And there's supposed to be different builds. And the more that you play the game, the more you unlock. And as you saw on screen there, you might see like different attacks because every single item changes the way I attack. It changes the way I... Yo, wait, my trailer's scuffed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Check this out. It goes dark for a second. Sorry, I just realized it totally took me out of my jam. Look at this. Black screen. Okay. This is supposed to be showing a, a skill tree right here. Anyways, besides the point. Um, so... The whole point of the game is you're supposed to play it a ton of times. There's NPCs and they progress more the, the more times you play the game. You're constantly unlocking new items, new combos. Uh, and the whole goal of the game is to battle your way to the dinosaur Aztec temple and kill the feathered serpent, the god that the dino people worship. Uh, you're, you're the main character's a skeleton because they raid your village in the first 10 seconds of the game. They kill everyone in your village, and you cut a deal with the god of death to come back to life. For revenge, or for to save your family, there's a lot of different things going into it. I thought it was thematic, cinematic. Oh. Well, there it is. It's not a bug, it's a feature. So yeah, I'm trying to combine, like, uh, you know, platformer, like a lot of platformer stuff, with the Binding of Isaac, with Hades... And I'm making a game that I, I personally have never seen another game uh, do this. Like, I'm making a game that I want to play the crap out of. And I'll be honest, that's probably what I'm going to do when I launch the game. I'm literally just going to play a ton of it uh, on stream. But, like, I just wanted, like, a roguelike that had dinosaurs in it primarily... And I love Aztec mythology, and games tend to veer into Egyptian or Norse or Greek mythology. Not a lot of games go Aztec. And so, I just, I was like, alright, I gotta make my own game. Hey, Noon! Yo, long time no see, I hope you're doing well. Yo, I'm sorry for missing most streams. Dude, you're fine. Totally fine. Happy to see you popping in. Hope you've been doing well. Okay, so we're gonna have like a true. Wait, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. So we go trap wall, right? We have. Hold on. We're gonna do some fun levels here. Okay. So we have this up here. Can the player even make it up there? That's a, that's the thing. Maybe we have to create like a platform in the middle here. 
Um, okay, so we're gonna have this here. Yeah, we're gonna make them go two different ways here. Down and then up. Yeah, you doing okay, Crumb? You know, I'll carve this out, and this is totally where we're gonna put it. Right there. So they they gotta come step on this pressure plate, which opens up the top area, and then they gotta they gotta step on a pressure plate up here, which will then open this area. There's lots of fun stuff here. So this is beta 4.3. This is beta 5. Every week I up the the big number. It's beta 5.0 I'm working on. It's gonna come out later tonight. So I understand a lot of people are probably gonna be asleep by the time this beta comes out. It is what it is. But yeah, this is the last big beta before launch. So I'm definitely counting on people to, uh, I mean, I'm counting on people to, to find as many bugs as they can, to really be brutally honest with me, what's fun, what's working, what's not working. And then it's just gonna be like a mad scramble to fix as many game breaking bugs as I possibly can. We're gonna go in priority, priority order. Uh, as many game breaking bugs as I can before release next Monday. Uh, do what? I don't know, Dave H. Elkob, I ordered a new rat gear for the crumb feeder. Let's go. I'm hoping it comes in this week so I can assemble everything and start testing. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I'll make a... Uh, I guess I already have a feed crumb option, but I can make one that's like a test one or something so you can test it out or whatever without wasting the channel points. Um... And just like spam it. So since you're on the fifth beta, do you still want me playing beta four and mentioning bugs? Yeah, that still is useful, Frostern. Yeah, if you're still playing that fourth beta, I mean any bugs you find, they're still gonna be applicable. I just mean like I need people to like test out and find bugs in the fifth area. Like I need people to be playing in the temple and be like, hey, this enemy in the temple bugged out. This enemy here isn't right. You know what I mean? Like this We gotta get some different stuff. Oh, this is gonna be so sick. Like up here, like I can totally, I can make like some gnarly room up here. Um, like give me the hive sack. Like I can totally just. Like stick this thing in there. And then I can probably even get rid of, I don't know, some of that. And I can just fill this whole upper area with pustules. Nice. Okay, so these are like little explosive, like, yeah, I don't know, like sacks, growths. Know, whatever whatever it is that they are um and they will damage the player unless the player breaks them and they also um they also damage enemies if you manage to explode them near an enemy so definitely some cool stuff here but yeah just putting them everywhere here and then we'll do the Big pustules. Probably just stick those in a lot of different places here. Nice. Yeah, just cool stuff like this. Perfect. So that's a really cool looking area. I've been saving points to test. Yeah, but I mean, I, if anything, I would like the... Because it's on like a 30 minute cooldown timer so that people don't kill crumb. Like, I don't know. I mean, if it, if, if you don't need me to, then that's fine. I won't. But like, I just was like, yeah, I don't just want to leave you. Um, <laughs> like, you test it and then you're like, okay, I got to wait 30 minutes or whatever. 
So are you basically making modular level pieces for the levels? Yeah, so it's it. I'm adopting the same strategies, the Binding of Isaac and Hades. So that means pre-built levels with randomized elements within the levels, and the levels are randomly selected. So the Binding of Isaac, every single room in that game is pre-made. Uh, but then the things that can happen in the rooms are random. So like, for example, I have this object called Random Enemy Spawner, and it, it will randomly select from this pool of enemies that I can insert in over here and spawn random enemies based on the seed. I mean, my game is also seeded. Seeded. Uh, same with the treasure chest. Every treasure chest, like, just because it shows the treasure chest here doesn't mean that this treasure chest is going to be there. It has a chance to not spawn in. So, like, it is more of like a... It still is randomized, feels randomized, but I still have, like, control over the levels. Um, Arsene Igorov, so you're a developer, and I'm streaming? I Yes, that is true. I'm, I am. That is a correct... Uh, correct view. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me let me create a new thing here. So we'll go temple breaking platform. Temple breaking platform. So I'm gonna do something kind of cool here. I mean, it's it's gonna be pretty cool. So we'll call this temple breaking platform. We need to give it the sprite that we just created here. Um, yeah, breaking rock platform. We gotta give it the right amount of frames. We'll scroll in here. Perfect. Value eight, value nine. Okay, yeah, so we're right here. Hold on. I think right here is where we'll drop this out. So right here, the actual platform you can no longer stand on once it gets to this point. And then we have a start time, and then we have a fade back. Nice. And then we have a stable. Okay break all right so now we have a breaking platform that the player can jump on seems like a good way to do procedural generation yeah it's definitely simpler it's not as complicated with the code that you're not gonna run into as many bugs is there a way for the player to know what level they're doing if you press escape it will tell you the level in the top left corner but that's only for testing purposes. That's not going to be in the final game. Uh, that's smart with the animation player. Yeah, I mean, I, I love animation players. They make coding very simple. Uh, okay, so. Give me this. Give me a new script. Put all of that in here. Um, so, in the animation player here. Right, when this thing breaks, we, we tell it to start the time, which is start a timer, it fades back in. But I want some of these to stay destroyed once I step on them. So all we do is I create a new variable. So we go export variable perma break equals false. And then we say, hey, if perma break equals false, then start the timer. Otherwise, we don't start the timer and then it never comes back so now we can create pl uh, platforms here that break and they're one and done and we can actually do some cool stuff like a platforming challenge that's like a one and done uh and that's just to add and ramp up the difficulty here but it's also so that i can do the following right so i can now go hey temple breaking platform the player needs to go down first right so i can create a platform and the player will have to step on this. It breaks, and then it never comes back. Like, it's just a cool way to to do things. So, I'm not actually not going to put it there, but I'm going to put one right here. Yeah. Yeah. 
and I can create like a couple here. And it's just fun. It's just a way to, to break up what's going on. Make it feel like you're kind of breaking and digging your way through these passages. And all I have to do is I have to set perma break to on. Which you can't see because of the crumb cam. But it, it created an exported variable off to the right here. And I just click it. Crunch time. Absolutely far from casual. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, big, big time on the crunch. Here we go. Kapow, ship it. Okay, so one thing that I got to test in this first level is how big are these enemies actually, right? How big do I need to make these areas? Kapow with the water, thank you. Looks like they'll fit in a, in a three area. Thanks for the water, my friend. This is water. I know it looks like a beer can, but it's a water can. Okay, sorry, I'm just hopping between random streams trying to hang out with people. No worries, come hang out, dude. We cooking, so gotta be wet brain, absolutely. Hey, whoa, hey! Far from casual. I don't got cokes right now, but I got a monster. This is for you. I appreciate that. Alright, see, this is sick. And look, all the enemies in this area, the idea is that you'll be able to see the vast majority of enemies because they'll have things like this. They'll have lights. But there's gonna be some that you don't. Like there's a cultist dagger. He's supposed to be in the shadows. Uh, he might spook you if you're not careful. We're going back to the temple. Sounds and Spelunky. I would not have redeemed the monster. Okay, far from casual. I'll refund your points. How the heck do I refund points? Can't do it far from casual. So I'll drink a water to balance it out. I wish I had Coke. I totally would. Oh, hold on though. Hold on though. Wait, what's the thought process by not redeeming a monster or redeeming a Coke? Don't they both kill me in the long run? Kapow. I wish I could see how many points you've spent on water. There's got to be a way, right? There's got to be a way. There's no way there's not a way. There's gotta be a way. If I click on viewer rewards, channel points. Reward. Rewards. Drops emotes. Excuse me, I have no idea. I think that would totally be a cool thing to do, though. Channel points. Manage rewards and challenges. Isn't there, like, a review of reward queue that I can look at? Oh, yeah. Review the requests queue. Whoa. I can, I can go back and look at everything that's ever been sent. So I could do it manually. Holy... It's only from 20 days ago, though. Dang it. But I could go through one by one and, and look at all of the different requests for it. There you are, Kapow. Well, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> no hope. It is what it is. Arsony, what's up, dude? Not a lot of people read chat when streaming. Well, I try to. I got two chats I'm managing, though, because I read Twitch and YouTube. Um, why do you feel pathetic, dude? Don't feel pathetic. Personal things aside, have you seen the Thunderman's Return movie? I have not. It's crazy. I have no one to talk to about it because nobody in my friend group has seen it. I don't even know what that is. Thunderman's Return? I have no idea. I'm not that bothered. Just interested. It is what it is. Monster killed my grandma, so I'm seeking revenge. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it expires, unfortunately. Oh man, don't worry about doing that. Thunderman returned. I have no idea what that's from. We got Arsony over on the YouTube chat talking about it. 
All right, let me let's see what's going on here. This is looking decent. We could then create some enemies over here. Could also create some treasure chests. Oh, you know what I do need? So there's like a destructible in every area, but I don't have one in the in the temple. Hey, Kapow, welcome to the YouTube chat. Son always reads chat and and the community is good. That's true. I'm way better at reading the Twitch chat though, I'll be honest. Sometimes YouTube gets overlooked. Far from casual. You just 10x watered me. Let's go. I spilled. Wow, I'm at one water. Thank you for supporting both streams, Kapow. Right, so I need to create like a little mini destructible. There's no grass in the temple. There's no... So I gotta think about like, what would it be? What would a destructible element be? Because I, I, for example, in every area, I have grass that you can shoot and destroy. But... Can't have grass inside the temple. I could create mini rock piles. Or I could create like little statues, or I could create pots. Pots seem like the best answer here. I'll create some excuse me, pots. We're gonna be pretty quick with this. Once again, I'm not I don't want to spend a ton of time, but this is important enough. And it literally is important because some items play off of the fact. Excuse me, that you can find stuff from these destructible elements. Never tried doing a multi-stream? Do you have to use two instances of OBS or has it been something like You have to use two. It's annoying. So yeah, technically I'm actually just wrecking my computer by running two separate streams, but it is what it is, dude. Arsenal on YouTube says Thundermans is a sitcom back in 2013 that ended in 2019. It's like a comeback movie. It has sushi bombs filled with nitroglycerin. What the heck? I've never heard of that sitcom, dude. Is it a, uh, an, a, it sounds like it's something that would be animated, I'll, I'll be honest. So we're gonna be pretty quick here, like less than, than 10 minutes to draw all of these. We'll do a, one pot, two pot, red pot, blue pot. You know what was pretty cool? I, uh, so I've been trying to watch other streamers. And by watch, I mean, I try and, like, look at other streamers for, like, maybe 10 minutes. Or, like, I pull them up on the second monitor and I look at, like, I just see how they're, how they stream, like, what they talk about and what their chats are like. First off, I think my chat is pretty sick. But second off, uh, a lot of you are just in other streams. <laughs> I'm like, why is this chat sick? Oh yeah, because these are all the people that are in my streams. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Makes sense, honestly. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. I always see, I always see people who are hanging out on my channel pop, popping up in other channels. I'm like, oh. And then I have to quell the part of me that's like, you filthy traitor! And I'm like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. There, there can be more than one. How dare you be in practical NPCs chat? That's just a gut reaction. I'm not saying it's the right one. That's just a gut one, okay? And then I go, okay, no, it's okay. It's okay. All right, one pot, two pot, red plot. Wow, red plot, red pot, blue pot. I won't tell your wife you've been giving me chocolates. What the heck not been happening? Get out of here. Bro, someone clipped a clip that was like, don't tell my wife or something. It's been a while since I've looked at it. Hold on. Wait, I think my good friend Thomas... Is, is he ending stream? I'm trying to farm channel points. Because this game has like an upward progression. Ending early SMH. The section. This is my friend. I like to... I guess 
I like to watch his name's uh, Thomas. Early? It's all so I can raid you, so Sundown, how long are you streaming for? All right, I guess I'm getting raided. All right, well, we're about to be raided. <laughs> this is my good friend. I can't wait for his two viewers to come over here. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to pull up the clip of... Uh, uh, it's fine. We're, we're friends. I can I can roast him. See, but that's, that's an example of I know the context and he's my friend. I never say that about another fellow game dev streamer who I knew. Um... Okay, hold on. It is called. Look at this. this is my this is my clips? All my clips. And then someone clips something. It's like, don't tell my wife or something. Oh, it's it was super far. It was super long ago. Dang. Uh Oh maybe maybe it's not here anymore. I didn't delete it. Out of context coke. It's even funny the second time. Loss of husband points, maybe this is it. I no, it definitely was like don't don't tell my wife or something is what it was called. I have no idea though. Anyways, sorry, let me pull up actual um, music again here. Forgive us, we just like game dev. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally joking. It's good. It's good. Hey, thank you, Dicosmos, the man of the hour. Thank you for the raid. We're working on drawing some sprites here. Don't worry, you can actually watch the stream, that Cosmos. No spoilers. Actually, I mean, pro probably just this part of the stream. <laughs> you probably can't watch later on. Uh, I guess since I'm banned, I must leave. Yep, see ya. Banned. All right, uh, guild NPC -er right here. Oh my goodness, bro, you got a BCPU, double OBS, Godot, a sprite, a Twitch stream, and a thousand tabs. Oh, you already know Trevron. You've been guilty with raiding with a party of two. I, I'm fine. I love it when people raid me with a party of two. That cosmos is double that. Let's go. Maybe the destructible items could be a group of mushrooms. Ooh, that could be cool. Let's see how the pots look in in the levels, though. If they if they give off if they don't pass the vibe check, I could test out mushrooms or maybe spores or something. He told us your name, bro. His name's in his description. Just don't tell him that I told that I told you guys his address. That he won't appreciate that one. Okay. All right. All right. I'm liking these pots. Do wait, this one looks scuffed? What's going on here? Nice. Nice. All right. Pot one. Pot two. Pot three. Pot four. Give me. Let me do this one. All right. Now it's all about just colorations. So this doesn't really matter. In fact, the variance in the colors here is going to be what really sells this as like a cool effect. Yeah, something like that. This, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. See, this is, this is looking temply already. Like I said, we're not going to spend too much time on these. See, so that's that's cool. Good colors there. Let's do a second one. 
And this is a pretty funky uh, palette. I don't know what palette it's called, but it is uh, It's a cool one. Cool one. Hmm. Maybe we go green here. Ah, uh, it's very funky. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe this. Yeah, that this is like very green. Ah, but it'll be darkened up by the the surroundings, so maybe it's okay. Maybe we can do this. All right. I don't. It's it it do be really green. If anything, I like this color. Hey, welcome, Snapthorn. Also, Arsny. Sorry if I missed your things. I told you the movie is crazy. That's why I don't talk about it with people who haven't watched it because the thing I'm making all of this. The main premise of the thing is Thunderman is about a family of superheroes trying to hide their identities and general living in a place called Hiddenville. Yeah, you're right. I, it doesn't sound real. Dude, you gotta go to bed. Dude, what the heck are you doing? 1 a.m. Good night, dude. Thank you for the compliments. Hey, and thank you, Snapthorn, for the follow, dude. Hello, it's me. I had to make a Twitch account to see your stream. Oh, nice. Well, it is what it is. There it is. What do you mean to see my stream, though? Also, wait, how the heck did I... Okay. It was very weird. Oh, 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 because you probably came from YouTube, right? Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Nice. Gotcha. Yeah, it's me. Okay, yeah. What up? So, succulents, right? Nice, dude. It's about time you join the dark side. I mean, the right... The light... Right side? Light side? I don't know. Alright, you know what? I'm... I've cooked long enough... Long enough on this, uh... That pot. It is what it is. Uh... What is a... Another color. This one could be gray big gray pot see i like these colors here because they are forcing me to first off combine colors i never thought i would combine and so they kind of look cool because i'm doing that but also it is forcing me to um uh yeah to use to use these other colors and to try and make them work and it's definitely it, it's going to be beneficial because these are going to these are going to look cool these are going to look like cool pots Yeah, there we go. Zaties. Stop using YouTube for a bit. You asked me from earlier, whatever works. I like Snapthorn. It is, that's what it is, Snapthorn. Up, I meant? What do you mean, up, Arsene? Yeah, I gotta, like, I gotta look into that because it definitely sounds, like, pretty wild. Like, genuinely. <laughs> uh, Alright, hold on. Contagious... No. What about this color? See, hey, th these are some funky colors now. Hey, I like this. We gotta really sell the fact that this one is big and round. Bada boom. I guess it probably like yeah, it's like a nice middle here. Something like this. Sure, you know what? It is what it is. And it is looking cool ish. Alright, cool. Different colored pots. Nice, cool pots. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Although I am realizing now that because I'm choosing to create them all different colors, it'll be harder to. To create, um, it'll be harder to like create like when they break, like assign it to the right color. So I mean, I could. It'll just take like an extra two seconds of time, but that that two seconds could come in handy. You never know. Okay, so let's try to get unique colors here. Maybe we do four colors on this one.
maybe we just do that. Yeah, that's already looking better-ish. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, it's worth it. They'll, they'll look cool. Okay, uh, next up on the chopping block, the last one here. What colors can I use? This is where I'll probably pick a new palette. And... Sure. Yeah, we'll just use these. Right, now we just select this color. And then we can even select it again and just do this. Cool! Hey, now we got a bunch of different pots. So, now we create the particle effects for when these break, when each of these breaks. Which should be very simple. So each is probably going to be like a 6x6 six six pixel thing here. Um, like making it up, I didn't make the type of the thing. I like writing my grammar stuff. They'll think I'm making it up. I'm afraid. Like making up the story? Or making up what? Arsony. Okay, the, even this is like too big. We'll go canvas size here. 4x4. Four four. Now this is what I like to see. So yeah, when we're creating pot pieces here, they can be pretty small. Yeah, like they can just look like this. And create another one. This one is going to be the green one. Uh, you know, once again, actually, I think we can just put all of these on one. No, no, we can't. These actually have to be separate. Oh, wild. Why do they have to be separate? Because we were using them in a particle. Uh, we're gonna be using them as particles. So each of them needs to be their own separate particle uh, Okay, gray one here the gray one here. I actually have an idea for what I want to do with it Wait a minute hold on uh, I, I actually want to make the gray one square. I think it'll look better. And then our last one here, we can have it be very smooth brained. What does that mean? You'll find out in a second. Is what it means. Boom. Okay, so we'll save this as pot four, pot four, piece, PNG. Make sure that we're saving this to. I guess destructibles. Pot four piece. This is pot three piece. Pot three piece. Making sure to save all of these as PNGs. Let me take a look at chat here. Uh, I didn't finish typing it. The full message you couldn't. The premise like straight up sometimes doesn't make sense. What happens sometimes? I think we. That's possible to do in a lot of movies. It's like pot two piece. Like if you just explain a movie poorly enough, no movie makes sense. It's like, yeah, bro, there's like a whole island full of like dinosaurs and they escape. How do they escape? Well, like this guy just like purposefully shuts off the system and lets him go, but it's on accident. But he shuts the system off purposefully. Yeah. But then it's somehow on ac accident. Yeah. How? Like if you describe Jurassic Park poorly enough, you'll get there, you know? All right, save as Temple Pots, PNG. All right, save. Boom. So these are going to be the pots that we lay out in every single level uh, that the player can break. And that means that we're actually going to have to uh, find like a, a pot break sound. Uh, ceramic. Ceramic jar set down. Is there one where it's like breaks? <laughs> what if we go Pixabay? Ceramic. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Hey, 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 stop playing this. Plate break. Yeah, kind of. I bet if we slowed that down, it would work. Um, pottery dish smash. So those all have like way too much reverb, which is the problem. That's good. I'm honestly, if we just pitch that down, it actually works a hundred percent. Diners are cool. Thank you, Arsony. They'll think I'm making it up. Who? Why do you? Who? Why do you keep saying they? Who? Who thinks you're making what up, Arsony? All right, so if we import in this pot sound, this is gonna be so satisfying. First things first, sound is way too long. A second, too long, too long, too long. We're gonna change the tempo. We're gonna put it down to 0.5. We then take the pitch, we pitch this down. Perfect. Beautiful. We go in, we put a graphic EQ, bring out the bass. We go in, we bring in the trep. We want to pull out the high notes. Give it a compressor. Give it a limiter. Call it a day. We'll fade it out. Now I just need another breaking sound for the start. Just a quick break. Oh, that's a cool sound. I like that sound. I also like that sound. I don't think we have a crumbling sound for the platform, so let's make one. So using those two, first I'm going to import in the first one. So once again, this one can be fixed by simply shifting the time on this down to 0.5. And then we'll limit the bottom one. This just gives it a punchier sound. My friends is the fear they will think we haven't watched it. That's all bull crap. It's your fear. Dude, who cares? If you're talking about something, why does it matter, dude? My friends don't believe me? Alright, whatever. You just pick, dude, Google it. If it's real, just pick, dude, Google it. It's right there, dude. Okay, beautiful sound. Perfect. We export that and we say pot break. Export. Take me back into the sound effects here. It's important to do this before the first level because if we're putting pots into every level, I mean, we need the pots there. You know what I mean? We go sound effects. Okay, first sound effect here, pot break. And then the second one that we're going to make is... Uh, platform break for like when it crumbles or whatever and that sound i mean it happens over the course of a second but let me import in this sound here stones falling so see how it happens over three seconds we can tempo this out to yeah 1.5 and then we can even fade it out yeah yeah, we'd fade it out a lot more. Okay, we export this as platform break. Export. We come back in here. Platform break. Perfect. Now we can put that into every single platform. Like breaking platform sound. So right here we just go hey sound effects.play platform break and we play this at one zero honestly maybe negative five okay now we take this 
And we go into every breaking platform. Script. Which, yeah, there should only be one other one right here. Perfect, they're playing the breaking sounds. Beautiful. Oh, Kiwi, I saw it too late, oh my gosh. Let's hear it, though. Dude, it's the same sound, Kiwi. We're on the same wavelength. Holy, it's the same sound. No, like, like, actually. Oh my goodness. You were ahead of the game, though. I should have been looking at chat. Okay, well, I have anxieties. No, you're good, dude. I don't care if English isn't your first language. If anything, it just means you're, like, way smarter than the average person. You know two languages. I wish I could be more like you in that way. Dude, I have anxieties, too. What do you mean? <clears throat> Arsony on YouTube says it leads to you not knowing what to buy in the grocery store and stuff. Dude, I looked at this crazy study. Apparently, 20 minutes in to shopping, people's like filter or their ability to like withhold from impulse buying. Like, I think it was down by like 50%. But it was like after 45 minutes of being somewhere in shopping, it shuts off 100%. Like, people will just buy stuff. I struggle with that too, going through <laughs> stores. And after I hit the 45 minute mark, and I'm like, all right, I'm buying like the 24 pack of Coke. That's what happens every time. Okay. Um. Let's go back in here. We have the crumbling plat uh, platforms now. And these ones are permanent. They don't come back. We've set them to perma break. Awesome. Uh, we need to create. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, give me crystal. Crystals. So we need to create breakable pots. So I'm going to call these pots. Duplicate. Bring me back to pots. Okay. Hello, pots. Okay. So I call these pots. I give it to the sprite of temple pots. Okay. Now in pots, it needs its own script a hundred percent so we do this and we have to say oh what was the sound that we just made sound fx pot break so this is the sound that plays when we break a pot but then this the the scene that we create so it says that we're creating crystal break we're gonna take that And we're gonna make some pot breaking ones. So we're gonna go pots, pot break one, and I'm gonna create one, two, three, four for the four different color pots. <clears throat> Arsene, well, you don't care what your friends think if that you're making it up, like you don't have that fear. Honestly, it's probably my fault because I sometimes pull crazy pranks on people. That would probably do it, Arsene. I was not one for pranking in my years. In my young years. Seriously, I actually got asked that question recently. Like, what is the most epic prank? It was like on these little cards and you read them off. And it's like break the ice or whatever. And like both with a group of people. And I was reading it and it's like, <laughs> what's the craziest prank you ever pulled off? And I was like, honestly, pff, wrong, wrong person to ask. I was like, I, nope. I don't, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know, you know. Okay, Particles 2D here. Lifetime is one second. Let's do a lifetime of 1.1, 1 .1, what, 1 1.2 seconds? Now go ahead and give me pot piece one, pots piece. Hold on, pot. Pot one piece, okay, oh my goodness. Alright, that's good. 
for like a little breaking pot. I like it. So that's pot one break. Save it. Hold on, I can I can make this however I want though. Like, does this look good enough for me? Like, maybe I make this unique and I just switch some of these just a little bit. Just a little teeny tiny bit. 80 and we go 0.75 is the randomness. Let me say like 1.5 and then we make this one 1.5. You don't repeat. I don't know why you would repeat. Drag you to here. Put you to there. Cool. Uh, Alistios, what's up? Good day, good day. It would be funny if when destroying vases, there was a small chance that an enemy would appear. Maybe, oh, maybe it could be a small chance a, a ghost appears. Wait, think about that, Kiwi. A small chance a ghost pops out of a freaking pot, though. Think about it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Holy crap, I'm doing it. That's such a cool idea. We'll do this. We'll go f open. Uh, feathered serpent. Enemies. Give me the ghosts from the... I like a little... I like a good callback like that to like earlier enemies and stuff. Let's freaking go, dude. Ghost enemy. Like, watch. Give me this. We do a temple ghost enemy. We make them freaking golden. Yo, let's go. Let's actually go, dude. Okay, so the eyeballs. Boom. We do this. What are we working on? Coffee pot? Let's go. <laughs> we're working on uh, the breakable pots for the... So we're working on fourth area stuff. So like it's pretty much done. All the enemies are done. We're just going to cook on some levels. And I needed like, there's grass in every level or crystals that break. I was like, I need something for the temple. So, hey, lo and behold, we got temple pots. Um, okay, cool. That being said, though, let's go. Okay, so they could either be this color. Uh, that's a very intense color, actually. Ah, but you know what? That's sick, though. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. That's the only thing that matters. Okay, watch this. Watch this. So we save this. Save as... Enemies. Temple. Temple ghost. PNG. Because the ghosts, I think, are probably the most annoying enemy for people. And we have other ghosts in the temple, but, but hold up, hold up, wait a minute. We come into the pots and the pots have a chance to be like glowing. And if they're glowing, it means, hey, you better back up, my friend. So we give this pot a glow effect. 64 alpha do something like this Yeah, like we make the pot glow but like low key super low key like 0.25 right and then we make the color like very clearly like a yo right 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 save so if I were to bring this in here, let me just see how it looks in the darkness. Pots. Bring back the darkness. Oh, you can barely see it. Maybe it's got to be a little more intense because you can barely see it. Hold on. I also want it to be a specific color here. Level 5, 1. Okay, hold on. Temple breaking platform, you're good. 
So nice to see more of the temple. I know, right? He wasn't satisfied with just having an item in his game called weed, so he's adding pot also, pretty much. That's how. Got a got a cover large, you know. Guess not. Arsony, let's hear it, dude. All right, pots. Okay, it probably has to be at least an energy of one here. Okay. Save it. Check out how it looks in here. Okay, very... I think it looks subtle. Let me just turn off all of these hurt boxes and everything. So that I can really... Get a feel for how this is going to look. And level 5, 1. Okay. So this is how it looks in a level. And how does it look in the light? Eh, it doesn't even look that. In so it'll just have like a little glow in there. Okay, that's a cool giveaway. I like that. That's a good idea. So there's a random chance that they have that it's glowing orange like that. Ghost inside. And... Yeah. This is sick. This is a cool idea. That was a, Whoever came up with that? Kiwi, I think it was? Heck yeah. Arsony on YouTube says, Back to the Thundermans movie. The only other thing I want to tell you about the movies, it feels like those reunion specials like the Adam Sandler Returns or the Munsters. Huh. I haven't really seen any of those movies. I've seen a little bit of Adam's family. Um... Okay. Orange randomize. Let's go ahead and give this a seed. So we take this. We take these two functions, come back in the pots. Once it's seeded, right here, we then come into our. Oh no, so I can get the seed in here, and then I can go. Um, and create a new number right here. And I can say, hey, my random number is RNG random percent three, no, percent four plus one, I think is how that works. Yeah. Plus one. And this way I can say, hey, if my random number equals, also hold on, pot, pot color equals zero. So in here we go pot color, I mean, variable pot color. So we know what uh, dis like destroying thing to do. Crom, you're looking a little dark over there, dude. Let's fix this, bud. Hold on, Crom. We'll just turn the filter off. Holy! Maybe we turn the filter back on, Crom. There we go. That's better. Arsony on YouTube says the prank was that I got on a random draw stream and then like this person named Lyra was like no weird stuff and then you started a game of Would You Rather on the second round and then the story has yet to continue. All right, my random number if it equals so we say if my random number is equivalent to one, then we will go. Oh yeah, if it's how about if it's just equal hold on, hold on, hold on. What is the chance that a ghost spawns in a pot? Let's actually make it fairly low. Let's make it one out of a hundred. Okay? Straight up. One out of a hundred. So we go ninety-nine plus one. And if it is equal to a hundred, right? 
then I'm a ghost. We'll go dollar sign ghost inside dot uh, visible is true. And then we'll say variable has ghost, which is normally false. We'll set it to true. We'll set it to true. Has ghost equals true. A sprite frame is going to equal pot color. Perfect. Okay, destroyed will be true. We'll create whatever the pot is according to the pot breaking. Okay, so let's create the rest of the pot breaks. So this is the first one. So I think genuinely, let's make the gravity like way faster here. Then I can up the velocity. Can we get like 0.25? Now let's go 0.5. So yeah, when the pot breaks, it'll do that. Okay, this is looking cool. We got direction, the spread. Let's go 25. So it's not so horizontal. Okay, that's cool. Okay, yeah, this is looking cool. So this is pot break one. Save it. Let's create the other three pot breaks. And then let's get back to level design here. So pot break two. You gotta go. Hey, see you, Snapthorn. Thanks for sticking around. Have a great rest of your evening, dude. Okay, pot break two. We rename it. Give it its correct color. Pot two piece. Save. It's good to go. Okay, next up is pot break three, or we're gonna make pot break three. Pot break three. Give it the correct piece here. Nice. Save it, ship it. And then let's go pot break four. Create pot break four. So this will be cool because, yeah, we'll be able to create, uh, yeah, this will this will be cool. This is a, this is gonna be a cool effect. It's worth it. Pot break four. I just like the idea of having those little flame ghosts. Really small chance, but they can appear. It really throw people for a loop and you can tell by looking and being like oh yeah that pot was clearly glowing red good stretch crumb i like the stretches yeah all right the pot breaks they're all in order close out of them okay we have all of our pots we have our ghost inside you can take me back to pots so we got to create a couple different things here. So we'll go constant break one is pot break one. And the, these should actually all be like the same. Like I, I should just be able to go down like this. Pot break one, two, three, four, two, three, four. And then give me a ghost. Fire ghost is preload. This is where we will go ghost mage Hold on tiki mage ghost so let me duplicate this and let's just go fire ghost let me open up fire ghost all we got to do here is so easy we just give it the new uh fire ghost or temple ghost is what i call it oops Temple ghost. We just give it this. We make uh, him leave fire behind. So we go into our cultist torch. I grab the fire particles. Copy. Come back into fire ghost. Paste them in. process material oh we got to make sure they're in the right spot nice 
you can increase the amount here yeah so he's got a, uh, some cool fire particles that'll probably trail behind him and look pretty cool and then we can make sure that these appear behind the sprite even though he is translucent we make sure that this whole thing has a material that uh adds that glows so that this is a very visible fire ghost uh, all right arsene let's let's see this um so obviously you got banned from that stream oh because you said would you rather live in a world oh arsene we keep it family friendly over here i would rather live in a world without war though to answer your question but everyone after that was bored on that stream so you consider that a w it is a w to be unique whoa crumb yeah good chirps bud all right let's okay so now that we have this perfect we just mess with the movement settings right so max speed maybe we go max speeds 30 and then maybe we set the acceleration to like 300 okay save it ship it is good is done um so now in the pot here does glowing red pots still create the fire ghost it's as easy as that boom uh but also that being said we have to we have to create a couple things we have to say if if pot color equals zero right then go ahead and create the first color we'll just copy this you know a couple other just two more times here just two more if statements don't worry about it pot color is one or two or three then go ahead and instance break one or break two or break th oh break one break two break three break four yeah that makes sense okay why no switch case? Because it's so it's so much easier to do ifs and elifs. Also, point now. I didn't think you'd stick around. What's up, dude? I'll be honest. It's because I just I I actually have never done a switch case. I know what they do. I've had someone walk me through it before. But when it, I mean, I got a launch in a week, and I feel like my I would struggle to like write it out right now. Does that make sense? It's like I don't know. I, I probably would take longer to figure out the switch case and make sure it's working correctly because I've never done one like officially before than it would for me to just quickly just do four if statements. And then, I don't know, in like four months, I'll do a, a patch where like, oh, hey, yeah, I finally refactored all my code because I wasn't on a timeline. Hey, Gandalf the Grey, what's up? Let me do another if statement here because I'm freaking disgusting. If has ghost is true. Let's go ahead and create the fire ghost. What's up? Fire ghost. Fireball. Da, 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 da. Refactor later, but look up which is more performant between the two and GD script. Oh, switch case is absolutely more performant. There's no way it's not. This is doing so many checks. Absolutely, this is not the... That's not even in GD script. That's in every single... Like, there's a reason switch cases exist. There's no way it's not as good. RC. Uh, a spicy secret prank. That's funny. Well, good prank, dude. I guess. Have you actually pranked anyone in your friend group, though? That seems like it was a random streamer, from what you're telling me. Looking for now. No worries, Alistios. Working on the Roblox game in the background. Let's go, dude. Heck yeah. Best of luck. Mute me if you need to look at a freaking tutorial, though, dude. I know you're trying to do a ton of server stuff, so it is what it is. Okay, so now each pot, depending on what color it is, will break and be that correct color. Um, the fire ghost. Give me the regular ghost sound here. Maybe I do a specific audio here. Just real, just very spicy. Hold on. Desktop, sundown. 
documents. GitHub. The Feathered Serpent. Mm, the sounds. Eh, uh, ghost. No. Tiki ghost? Yes. Okay. We take this sound. And... I pull out some burning sounds. Which, actually, I think I just have some. Let me just import here. Because he's like a flaming ghost. Let's make sure he's like, you know, has some fire. Because we copy-pasted the, the enemy, but... I mean, we switched up just a little bit. That way he doesn't feel as bad. As bad of a copy-paste job. Fire burning loop seems cool. Fire sound effect also seems cool. Let's do both of them. Yeah. So we'll do this, and we'll, we'll fade out the fire at the end here. Fade out. Oh, shoot. Fade it out again. Yeah, it's like good-ish. Let me limit it here. Let me pitch it down. Okay, that sounds cooler. Let me get a fireball, like a more explosive start. Like, you just destroyed the pot. Holy crap. There's a fire. Um, like, there's a fire ghost flying at me. Fire sound effect, fireball, whoosh. Sure. Fade it in. Yeah, that's cool. So now, we export this fire ghost. Export. Let's import it into our sounds here. Bada boom, bada beam. Let's code. Oh, focus time. Oh, I just saw that. Okay, let's set a timer and we're only coding from here on out. Dang, dang. Um, we're good on the tutorial. Time to create stuff and build up level design. Oh, let's go. ETA should be playable in about one month or so. Super hyped. Dude, sign me up for the beta test, dude. <laughs> Don't have time to just code. Do what you need to be done. Thank you, Listios. I'll focus hard. Focus up. Okay, let's get this sound in here. Oh, we're coding. Okay, fire ghost. So right here, we'll say fire ghost instead of tiki ghost. Oh, but mm -mm, this this. You see, this is not the this is the tiki mage ghost. So if I really want to change that, I actually have to close out, give it its own script. Ugh, I hate doing this, but it is what it is. Fire ghost. Max speed? Dude, max speed 200. What are you doing? Stats.health minus equals 5. Why do I do this? Acceleration 220. Let's do 320. There's a much faster ghost. Maybe do max speed 180. I'm scared. Uh, Alright. We're chilling now. Back to pots. Now back to me. Play pot break. Alright, oh yeah, this seems good. So now we can come back into this area. We got our pots now. Let's get rid of the darkness so that I can actually see. Give me a pot. Wait, do I, do I not? Oh, I don't have pots in here. Pots. Well, that was quite the pop sound. Okay, this is perfect, actually. I love it. I am a huge fan. Be 
people are actually gonna Legend of Zelda the crap out of these pots. Yeah. Hey. Okay. That was more like a Kirby sound, like a low pitched Kirby sound from Melee. Oh well, it, it is what it is. Uh, any pots up here? Probably not. That, that's filled with like a ton of like, yeah, different stuff. But we'll put pots over here. Oh yeah, and these pots can cover up chests. That's right. I definitely should have put chests down first then. I'm glad I'm figuring out the order though. Alicios on Twitch says, by the way, I don't know if you know a YouTuber by the name of Penguin Zero. I do, but he's doing some giving money stream where you can ask him for money for a project. And I filled in a form to participate, asking him for $500 in order to give it back to you and gave him your Twitch and Steam game link in the form in case I got picked. But sadly, I was I was not. I'll try again each time I see him online. Goal is to raise money for you if you haven't show your game on stream. Could be life-saving in terms of visibility. Oh, absolutely. I'll have to check. I'll have to pop my streams too then and, and sit by my own stuff. Dude, Alistios, dude, thank you. That means a lot, dude. You're thinking of me and, and doing that. You don't have to, but I, I appreciate that, man. Going out of your way to do that. Thank you so much. You got to support your own project too, though, you know? But that's sick. That's really cool that he's doing that and uh, giving back. That's super cool. I love it when, uh, yeah, when people can give back to, like, their communities and stuff like that. Right, let's flip this. This is a good just three chest level. I'm thinking. Okay, yeah, so this is a pretty like it's pretty straightforward, but it's just cool because for the first time in my game you're going down. That's not a, a normal thing. Try my best to help good people that deserve to win. Thank you, Listios. Means a lot, dude. Okay, we have a torch holder here, so bring me back to the torch holder. I also have spikes. I don't know where to put the spikes. Um, but they got yellow paint on them. Maybe I could actually stick them at the bottom here. Oh, interesting. Players got to do some some platforming. Interesting, huh? I'll do it. Don't think I won't. Uh, oh, give me the spikes, though. Gold spikes. All right, Arsony on YouTube. Because <sighs> I'll probably be like, why did you do that? You once pranked Sienna and you pranked Jordan about nine years ago, you pranked Alina. I have no idea who any of those people. Oh, okay. Roommate must be pranked with loud noises or like convincing somebody your dead grandpa's alive or by telling people your family are aliens from space. Yeah, I feel like everyone on April 1st, that's like the free day to just mess with someone. <laughs> it's April 1st. I mean, just send it, you know? Anyways. Nice, you're, you're quite the prankster then, Arsene. So, uh, okay, hold on. Where's the torch? This torch holder here. The uh, flame holder. So yeah, we'll stick this like right here. Oh, well, you know what? We'll stick it right here. Because we'll probably need to place a platform in the middle here. We'll go temple breaking platform. What the heck? We can stick this in the middle so the player can use it to jump up here. Okay. I like it. Let me just make sure it's centered. All right, we're centered. So the player should be able to jump up here and then jump up here. Perfect. Okay, give me, take me back to the flame holder. So I need these in a couple spaces. I think, I think up here, no flame holder. 
in these alleyways, no flame holders. But then in places like this, we'll have flame holders. Yeah. Or like over here on this side, we'll have flame holders. Yeah, just stuff like this. Yeah, so it's kind of like you got to go up into the dark and figure out you got to fight all these like weird, you know, this stuff up here. Okay, perfect. This level is actually close to escape velocity here. Yeah, and the first few, like I said, are they're going to take us a while to get the hang of. But then once we get in a groove, like I was cranking out a level, a city level every like 10 minutes. So. Arsene on YouTube says you like pranking and stuff to prepare people because uh, like if I do that on a regular basis, people get mad. Yeah, I can see how that gets old pretty quick. So I try to do that on the holidays. Crumb! Oh, where's Crumb? Wait, Crumb, Crumb moved? Okay, Crumb. Hi! Is that good? Let me see, Crumb Cam? Now that you're not standing completely backlit, Crumb, maybe I can actually turn off this filter. There you go, buddy. Bye, Crumb. Wow, look at you, bud. In HD. All right. Save level five two. Wow, this is this is crazy. Oh wait, one thing I need to make sure when I do these levels. Well, first off, I didn't even put in any enemies in, but I have to make sure I turn on the darkness. Otherwise, the darkness won't be on, and that's like the most important part about these levels. Okay, down here, I'm thinking we go cultist torch. Cause it'd be cool because they kind of light these areas up but then we can also just have a normal a normal cultist enemy so we have cultist torch cultist dagger but it's more common that that we're gonna have uh uh the cultist torch and we'll have two of them right down here and then in here where it's more lit up we're more likely to have some Cultist daggers. Uh, we see how that works. Um. Okay, but my whole out of all of my enemies that I have, though, I also have like armored velociraptors and dread rexes that we can stick in these levels. And let me make sure that they're actually functioning properly. You meant you? Oh, gotcha. So yeah, if I go like Armored Raptor. Dun, dun, da, 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 da. Armored Raptor has his own, oh, has his own uh, code and everything. He should be good. Like he's, he's mad chilling. Yeah, he should work. So Armored Raptor works and he has a block on the top of him that the player cannot shoot through. It's pretty sick. Yeah, I believe it is in right here, the armor. Yeah, right at the top. Interesting. Yeah, so you actually have to get down and shoot underneath his armor. He's a really fun enemy. I really like how he, he switches up the game. Okay, uh, armored raptor then is good to go. But is the dread rex good to go? It is not. We don't have a Dread Rex yet. So give me Velociraptor. Velocir, sir, Velocir Raptor. Get out of here. Excuse me, sir. Dread Raptor. Dread Rex, I mean. Oh, we're so close. Dread Rex. All right. Dread Rex. Should have the same amount of frames. 
and he definitely is just bigger. Um, yeah, so let's let's go through these like one by one, honestly. Um Okay. So yeah, for example, his collider, how he interacts with the world. Let's up that here. Let's bring it bring it around. Next up. His hurt box. So this thing, let's, let's make it a little more even here. So this is where he can get hurt. Yes. So he can get hurt. We can make this pretty big, honestly. Well, yeah, we can make it pretty big. Okay, hit box. How he can hit the player. Oh. Shoot. If I open up my Velociraptor here, is my Velociraptor just scuffed? Yo, British Viking Kari, British Viking Kari, my goodness, what's up, dude? Cheers. Am I messing with any of this stuff in here? Looks like I might be. Maybe that not though. I'm gonna say don't save Dreadrex. I'm making all of these unique, dude. I think I'm in the clear. I think we're good, but that still freaked me out. Make unique. Because I could wreck a bunch of stuff. If I'm not careful. Wait, wait, wait. That was in the armored raptor. That was not in the... Oh, no, no, no. I opened up the velociraptor. I should be good. We're good. Whew. I was worried that because I had adjusted this and I had copied the object over, that it was going to make this hitbox grow in the velociraptor as well. Kiwi on Twitch says they could be introduced in larger rooms, and in case of an armored raptor, it could be replaced in a place where the player will see it from above. Yeah, totally. Totally, totally. I like it. Kiwi, you're built. You're built to design. We gotta... Remind me, we gotta do a room... I do want to do a room where you open up a, dro a door, and it's just a trap door filled with flies. That's a really cool idea. Okay. That being said, we got, I still got some stuff to do here. So this collider here, for us doing damage to the player, right? We make it big. Not too big though, but big enough. We want it roughly two pixels, roughly two pixels wide in each direction. Um, this allows the player, if they have bone boots, to be able to stand on top of the dread racks. Now the attack right here, we make unique. Let me pull up the attack animation here. So right here, I now know that this collision shape needs to be moved to like right here. And we need to make it significantly bigger. Maybe we just do this. See things I don't want the player to like not get hurt if he's standing like right here or whatever. So we'll do that. We'll be a little more aggressive with this one. Okay. As for the actual attack, like, yeah, right in here, this is where I'm seeing, uh, this is where the player can trigger the attack. So I actually stretch this out, stretch it down. Yeah, if they're anywhere in this section, they're gonna get attacked. And maybe I just do it in front right here. All right, let's go into the soul bar. Let's make sure that that is appropriately placed here, along with bleed, these two. Now we click them off. Same with stunned. Gotta make sure that that's placed 
All right. Uh, next thing that I got to do here is let me turn off like the hitbox and everything and the attack. I need to move the floor checks so that they're positioned on the edge right here of where he's going to jump out. So same goes for like the wall checks, honestly, like they can be shifted over here. Same with like the player check here. Uh, this Raycast 2D over here, that looks for the player. We shift that back over there. Perfect. And now all of this, like, it should be working great. Now the Dread Rex is going to have his own, um, script here. And basically all we're going to do in here is I'm going to change the... Yeah, like, I'm going to change, like, the acceleration. Um, obviously, I'm going to change the, the enemy stats here. But, yeah, like, his acceleration, max speed here, for example. Like, let's set it to 60. Like, just full stop. This Dreadrex here. Or this Armored Raptor. I'm going to set it to, like... Well, how much is a Velociraptor, actually? If I open up a Velociraptor, max speed is 80. The Dreadrex is 60. Let's at least make the Dreadrex 80. And then I'm fine keeping the Armored Velociraptor at like 60. It's a little slower. He's got armor on. We yeah, had the Dreadrex for sh Maybe the Dreadrex is 70. He's still slightly slower. Um, right. Okay, now looking, looking at the Armored Raptor here. How much health does a City Velociraptor have? So if I look at a city Velociraptor, max health times eight. It's times eight if it's in the city. So 20 times eight. I should just be able to do that off the top of the dome. Oh my goodness. It's 160. Okay, so 160, like armored Velociraptor, your max health should be like at least double that. So 320. I'm going to keep it at 320 because he has armor that's going to be hard to work around. So 320. The Dread Rex, however. Yo, my guy. Dread Rex. Dude, you got... You got easy 800 health. Easy. Full stop. You lost your internet connection? No worries, Arsene. You were going to ride again? Oh, yeah? You should do Kickstarter and work on this full time again. Oh my gosh. I still have to fulfill everything from the first Kickstarter, which by the way, okay, hold on. I just want to say something real quick. This guy redeemed the boss, like, or back to Kickstarter thing for the boss. Super cool. He, he sent me exactly what he wanted. It is, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. What is the name? And the name was something crazy. Kinich Yaks Kuk Mo. Okay, he said he wanted this guy to be the boss. Like, for his chosen boss. I'm looking at him like, dude, this... First off, like, he said he wants it in the city area, so with all the dinosaurs. So I'm like, okay, well, I can't just have, like, a random human god be chilling with the dinosaurs. So I gotta make him, like, reptilian-ish. But then I'm looking at this, I'm like, dude, he looks so silly. I'm sitting here, I'm like, how can I, like, freaking make this guy, like, in my game? And then it hits me, dude. Look at this. He has all the same thematic elements. So he's a boss that I'm still working on. That'll probably have to come in, like, uh, a patch later. But look at that. Yo, I got the eyeballs. I got the thing on his head. I got the beads around the neck. Bro, that's pretty sick, dude. I took some, and this guy, zero fan art, by the way. No one has ever attempted to actually draw this guy because, I mean, look at him. I have the absolute coolest rendition of this Aztec god and the only artistic rendition to ever exist. So, <laughs> anyways. 
Thank you guys for the compliments. But yeah, I like this guy a lot. Like, he's going to be a sick boss. And yeah, he's he's based off of the model of the first boss. But, like, he's different enough. Like, he has a different posture entirely. Like, he's not just copy-pasted. He's, like, literally different posture, different arm, different tail, different skin color, different head shape. But he looks similar. Anyways, it is what it is. Anyways, yeah, he's going to be cool to do. But I got to focus. Aztec God of Poor Vision. I know, right? The freaking glasses, dude. Yeah, and he's reptilian. He fits with the dinosaurs. I'm like, okay, this is... This is dope, dude. Alright. Uh, now that we got the health values chilling, they're good. And we have those two. Oh, no, no, no. The Dread Rex. Sorry. We're super close. Dread Rex. We are super close. But that being said, like, this is not something that you are. And. This is not something that you do. Same with the Armored Raptor. Armored Raptor in your ready event here. I have like a progression system, but yeah, that's not going to apply. And this should also not apply to the armored Raptor. All right. Okay. Going back to the dread Rex. He needs his sound effects and we already have those done. I just need to put them in. So let's find every instance where we do a sound effect. So when a Raptor gets hit, oh, now I need to actually find the dread Rex sounds. That was the thing. Red Rex. He's got quite a few sounds. So let me actually just screen cap this and just throw it up on my second monitor just so I know what they're called. Uh, Arsene on YouTube says, sometimes you do actually miss your grandpa though. He died in 2015 and so you talk to his photo. Sorry for your loss, dude. In 2015 though. That feels, that feel to me, I'm like, that was five years ago. And then I like, look, I'm like, holy crap, it's 2024. It was nine years ago. Mm, sorry to hear that, Arsene. Guess what I figured out? I figured out that uh, if you've smoked even a single cigarette, you are considered a smoker by the US government for eight years. Like when you go to the doctors, you technically should self-report you're a smoker. Even if you smoked one cigarette and it's been eight years. Isn't that wild? What the freak? Or or if you smoked not a cigarette, but I'm like, dude, like I'll be honest, I smoked a cigarette literally eight years ago now. This is my final year. I haven't smoked since. I tried it one time, one cigarette. Technically, I should have been self-reporting to the doctor. I'm a smoker. That's how, that's what it is technically by law. Killing one person makes you a murderer for life. Dude, oh, you did not just compare smoking a cigarette to murdering someone. I just think that's crazy. It's like, dude, what? Or like, and not just a cigarette. Like if you, if you, uh, I believe it's if you vape or if you uh, use medical cannabis as well. You are also supposed to self-report for eight years. But medical cannabis. So, yeah, I'm a smoker because my doctor recommended I smoke cannabis for... Uh, I'm like, this just seems so backwards, dude. <laughs> but you know what, Kapow? I guess, fair point. I guess. Dread Rex hit. But, like... Killing one person makes you a murder for life. Yeah, but it's because murder is permanent, though. Like, if you stop smoking cigarettes, your risk for cancer after, I believe that it's two years. After two years, if you don't have cancer, your risk for getting cancer resets back to the median average. Like, there are other methods of taking medical weed. Sure. But I'm just saying, like, I think the reason that, oh, you're a murderer for life is because that thing is for life, dude. But, like, it's literally backed by science that, like, a lot of those decisions aren't for life, you know? <clears throat> I 
Can you imagine if we brand Kapow, can you imagine if, if governments branded people for life because of a, of a decision that they made? That's insane, dude. Hey, man, we, you stole something when you were seven years old. We caught you at the gas station stealing a Snickers bar. For life branded. As thief. No shot, dude. No shot. I'm sure the risk of you killing, again, decreases time. Passes two, though. N oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, but the person I killed does not have a, a chance of coming back. But... You get what I mean? The effects of the smoking are not permanent. Like, if you stop, your body can heal itself and go back to normal. It has the potential to. It's 1 a.m. here? Okay. You're tired and weird tonight? <laughs> no, dude. I love the weird combos, bro. But also, holy crap, dude. Go to bed. That's so late, dude. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how people who have kids and families do it. I'm, oh, my gosh. Maybe I'm just cooked. Maybe I'm just lazy. Okay, raptor bite. This is going to be dread. Rex bite. Raptor death. Dread. Rex. Death. Kiddo is with his mom in the week. Oh, okay. Oh, I feel like I remember that, yeah. Also, guess what? I didn't... Re I, I figured this out, too. I had always thought that, like... I'm like, man, it kind of sucks that, like... Uh, in those situations, one person gets the kid for, like, the whole week, and then the other just gets him for the weekend. I was like, that's, like, two days versus, or three days versus, uh, four. No. I don't know, depending on when you get him. Five days versus two? But then I realized that the whole point of it is, like, well, the kid goes to school, dude. And so the time actually averages out. The time spent with kid averages out, considering the kid does not have to go to school on the weekends. I did not realize that that is what that actually accounted for. I was like, oh, it's not just stupid. Interesting. Arsene on YouTube says, he's been a bit mean to me, though. Who's been mean to you? I mean, Arsene, dude, you're not the... Dude, there's a, whole, a long history of people who talk to their dead relatives, dude. <laughs> Much of history is probably shaped by that. I don't think you're weird for doing that. Yo, check the Discord general. I'm scared. About I'm in a weird mood. Check the Discord. Check the general. I'm about to send this. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Dude, you actually that actually just made my mouth water. Holy. Those look bomb. I love bread, dude. Oh my gosh. This looks dope, dude. Went out for first wedding anniversary, dude. That's, I gotta, I gotta be more romantic, dude. All right, last wedding, wedding anniversary, we went out to dinner, but like it wasn't. I mean, we just went out. I didn't like do anything super, super special. Now I feel bad, dude. Afternoon tea in London? No shot. This is just an afternoon. Oh my gosh. I gotta move to London, dude. Or France? Maybe not France. Though I've heard bad things. But we are learning French. I don't know. I'm torn. Okay, so we have a jump, a land, a bite. Um, let me listen to the Dreadrex death. I think this is actually not the right sound. And now that I think about it, hold up. Wait, this is crazy. Now that I think about it, we actually don't have a Dreadrex death animation. We have the beginnings of one. Yo, aloof bubs. Thank you. Thank you for the prime sub, dude. 116, that's the highest I've ever been. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Welcome to the stream. You can now be a dinosaur at the bottom of the screen. And you can turn into a gambling addict. And lose all your money like Kapow. All right, let's go documents. Let's go GitHub, uh, music and sounds. So if I listen to this Dread Rex death sound, oh my gosh, that's not what I, I didn't mean to press enter. Okay, thank you. We open. I guess it's good enough. 
Uh, I guess that's good enough. Uh, so let me actually open up the Dreadrex Death. And I'll show you. that We actually just get to do the fun part. Um, we go enemies. Gorgos. Dreadrex. Yeah, so right here. We have a collapsing animation. But I do not have a death animation. But I could just reuse this collapse animation. I guess it's good enough. It's just not very bloody. Compared to all the other animations we got, you know, it's not that bloody. Hmm. I'm just thinking how I could do this. This is the place you went? Oh, let's see this kapow. Holy fancy, dude. Dang. That looks nice. Holy. That's the dream. Be able to take my wife somewhere nice like that. I wish we had pl cool places like that in freaking Utah, dude. What's up, Crumb? I'm getting mad about my food options. Good stretches, bud. It's next to the Ritz. Ooh, nice. Nice. Uh, you know what? On second thought, I think we're actually fine with the Dread Rex. All I gotta do is create an actual death animation for him. So, we go... Like, sorry and death. Sorry, sword death. Hold on. Sorry and sword death. Sariel sword death. Okay, there we go. So we take this, we duplicate this. I call this dread rex death. Um we open up dread rex. Okay. Put it right there. Now, why do I did I copy all this? Because in here, I just want this code. Actually, that's all I really care about. So get rid of this. Create this. Boom. I'm just gonna call this death. We go dread rex collapse. And it's only one, two, three, four, five, six frames. Only six frames. Select all these, delete them, delete spawn sword, give it to the kinematic body 2D, don't need it. So he falls to his death. And we can actually create some blood here. So if I go cultist dagger death, we got some fun blood I can do. Well, then I guess it's bedtime. Dude, Kapow, good night, dude. It's always a pleasure hanging out with you. Sleep well, my friend. I will keep up the hard work. I'll have a beta for you tomorrow. Ship it. Just right now. It's ready to go. <laughs> Thanks, man. Hey, see you. Sleep well, dude. Arsene on YouTube says, but I don't do all of that because I'm uncomfortable to visit those places and neither me or my family see any reason to go there. To the graveyard? Visit your family? I like graveyards, dude. I think it's like a nice moment of reflection. Whoa, Soul Engine Studio. I don't have Coke, but I'll take a monster for you. I hope I haven't ruined your week with how long that podcast was, my friend. I still am like, dude, I should have just, I say too much. I was like, at this point, we just got to make it a yearly thing. Because it was around the same time last year you did, we did an interview. Just next year, we'll do it again. And then I can just like, crap all over myself again. Like, oh, I had no idea what I was talking about. This is actually what's up. <laughs> I think it'll be funny, dude. 
Anyways. Might be kind of cool. <clears throat> You're like, please, no. <laughs> okay, admitting. Uh, we're going to go and make in make this unique and mess with the particles here. So we'll go mission direction. Ne one. Negative one. I was going to say negative one. But we actually want it to be one. So it goes out to the right. Yeah, there it is. Kind of vomits a little bit. And then... When he lands right here, maybe I can do another, like, explosion of blood. Like, blood too. We put it on the ground here. I take this one, mess with the particle materials. Nah, I'm currently editing it. It was, let's do it. That'd be funny, dude. It'd be sick. It's definitely cool to look back on for sure. Already? Like, this is gonna be sick. Just watch the, where I was at a year ago, where I'm at now. It's cool, dude. It's like you're forcing me to journal, but visually. And I can't erase or edit anything. <laughs> I love it. Is there a lot of editing? I guess you are going to edit it down pretty heavily. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Dude, you should upload a... Do like a... A, a raw cut and just make it unlisted. Just so I can look back on it. Arson, you know what I mean? Like Spider-Man did with Uncle Ben in the Raimi film? Dude, the Raimi films, Arson, they're so good. Yeah, I get what you're meaning. I get what you're saying. All right, direction. We're only gonna do negative one. The emission shape here is a box that is long. Even longer, 48. Maybe 42. Let me get rid of the first blood so I don't get confused. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We could also do... Well... Maybe the spread's 25 here. I have all the power! I think I can get a few thousand people to get a game. Dude, it means the world to me, man. Especially, like, right before I launch something. That's sick. I'm for sure repaying the favor when your game is closer. Also, by the way, uh, once I, like, have more free time, dude, I'm super open to doing artwork for people's projects, ironically. The part that I ended up hating the most in game dev, I, like, actually love. Like, I wish I could just do that and be done. Just have someone do stuff with it, you know? So we'll see. I do get why, though, because he was reasoning was that's Hollywood stuff. I don't understand what you're saying, Arsene. Okay, so I'm liking this. Like, he lands on the ground and, like, blood, like, spurts up or whatever. And then I can actually create, um, blood. And create, like, some oozing blood. A blood line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when he lands on the ground here. Yeah, I can create a bloodline. So that's just messing with the scale. So what, we go point 0.1. I key it in right there. And then I extend it out until 9 seconds. We extend it out to what, like 5? Maybe 4? Maybe 3? Okay. We'll have the bloodline. And then there should be like blood. Blood lines. Blood drips. Yeah, blood drips. Yeah. Like wherever I died. 
So don't create them there. Let's create a new thing here. We'll start it at like the four second mark. Give me blood drips. Transform. Let me fix your X. Yeah, and we just have them. Um, they start out at point one. Mm, and then what? If I make them like this. Okay, I gotta like set the offset differently. So I gotta go offset negative or positive two. This way when I mess with the scale, yeah, it does it properly. So what? we go zero. I put it up right there. I create a couple other ones. Wow, Elk have an underscore. Thank you, dude, for the follow. So I can hide these two blood drips underneath the main blood drip. And then in the animation player here, when I begin to create these blood drips dripping down, right? You can see it will drip all of them down. So I key that in. We have blood drips two, like right here. I can move that right there. Blood drips three. I can move you like over here. So now if I look at this death animation, like, let me hit the reset here. Blood drips too. Hold on. There's a couple other things I got to do here. So right out the gates here, this, this is just, it's, it's emitting, it's active the second that well, it's not active. And then we set it to active right here. And then it's no longer active. But that's not saying it's not visible. It's just saying it's no longer emitting. So he does the one like blood vomit. Lands on the ground here. This is where we set this one to not emitting. And then emitting right when he lands on the ground. And then no longer emitting. And then both of these blood drips here. Right. Right. They're both not visible. So we keep both of their visibility is off. Um, hold on. And I actually have to... I'm pulling up the animation play here. Sorry, I know you're typing in chat. I'm just a, a tad bit lost in the sauce here. Two seconds. When he lands on the ground, that's where we set both of these to be visible. Nice. Okay, now I can show what's up. Oh my gosh, Revere with the party of 10. What's up, everyone? Drink water? All right. The adversary 238. That, the algorithm summoned me at random. I have no idea what's going on and I can't stay as I was just having a sig. But good luck on the launch. Thank you. Cautious Dan H. Woo. What's up, dude? We're doing a... We're doing a, a, a gnarly death animation here. For our dread rex is what we call him. Check that out. Hey, thank you for shouting out Revere, by the way. Oh, and Revere, you gave me another drink water? And then a drink Coke. Thank you. Hey, cheers. Yeah, everyone. Uh, my game's launching soon. Any wish list, super appreciated. There's a free demo. My game is like a 2D Binding of Isaac. Roguelike. So if any of you are interested in any of that kind of stuff... Trust me, you'll like the game. Okay, now he's actually got a cool death animation. So we'll save this. It's good to go. We come back to the Dread Rex. Okay, we make sure he has the proper death animation. We go death animation or Dread Rex death. And then let me double check. I'm pretty sure we have an armored raptor death. But maybe we don't. Armored raptor, your death is just velociraptor. We got to give you the right death. Armored raptor death. There is none. All right. That's, that's unacceptable. So we have an armored velociraptor here that I'm now going to create its death animation. Armored raptor death. Duplicate. 
Arsene, I do wish I could visit his apartment more and like see what happened to it, who lives there now. Yeah, so I, I, I get that feeling. I, when I moved away from my childhood home, every time I drive past it, I do like maybe once every four months because it's kind of far away. And I, it's usually just coincidental. But I do drive past it every time. I'm like, dude, I wish I could just walk inside and see like what's up. I really do. Uh, all right, so we go armored raptor death. We got to rename this armored velociraptor death. And we switch this to armored raptor death. I have no idea how many frames armored raptor is. Yeah, because it is a different amount of... Oh my gosh. Yeah, I forgot we make his head explode. Um, <clears throat> it is what it is. Uh, so let me pull that up. Or, or actually what we do is we can just count them out manually. Oh, jeez. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, my odd Oculus raiding with a party of 38. Everyone working on some dinosaur enemies for my game. Jeez, dude. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. And thanks for uh, blowing up the dinosaurs in a secondary extinction event. Game launch? Yeah, dude. I'm just... I'm I'm in crunch mode right now. Thank you, dude. I hope you had a good stream. I want to hear... If you're working on something, I assume you are. I want to hear about it. But just for all your viewers, so y'all get a feel of what my game is. W stream lots of shaders. Thanks, man. I shaders are my weakness. But let me let me go ahead and show you guys the trailer here. Yeah, dude, I've been cooking on this game three and a half years. Yeah, and everyone on my stream, go show Odd Oculus some love. Yeah, so I've been cooking on this a long time. I uh, I held a Kickstarter. I worked on it full time for five months. I recently went back to work this month, last week actually. And uh, I'd really like the game to do well so that I can. <laughs> Quit work again and just work on it full time. So any of you who are uh, who are in the roguelikes or platformers or even dinosaurs or just having fun, honestly, please go show my game some love. Uh, there's a free demo if you're hesitant, and uh, not to brag, but uh, I've had people put over 30 hours into the demo. There's a ridiculous amount of content in there, and at 100% will give you a feel for what the final game's like. But yeah, dude, I've been cooking on this a while. I'm super appreciative of the raid. And uh, this is what we're cooking on. I'm, I'm working on the final area of my game. There's five areas. And the last area is... Actually, this guy that you see right there, it's the Feathered Serpent. We're working on the final area before the boss. So it's a giant dinosaur cultist temple. Um, so we got like a, a bunch of... A bunch of stuff to do for that. Anyways... Auto Oculus, I'm gonna toss you a follow. Yeah, I'm already following you, dude. You've probably already heard this whole spiel. Dude, wait! You have a sick- you're creating a sick game. I just clicked two seconds. Dude. I actually watched- I watched you cook. You were doing like a just chatting stream and it was super- you were just answering so many questions. Dude. The amount of money I would pay for your game. I also- you're- you're also the first streamer. You should take this as a compliment. I'm not trying to belittle other streamers. You're the first streamer. I clicked on your stream and I was watching your like transitions and stuff. I was like, dude, there's a whole other a tier of streamer that I can achieve for. Because I, I usually I raid someone and everyone's stream is usually the same, but just the quality, dude. Anyways, thank you, dude. I'm stoked for your game, by the way. It looks sick. I'm trying to grind the channel points when I can so that I can get a, a alpha access or whatever. But dude, absolutely, dude. I'm getting your game. Yeah, you actually gave me some advice on going to the gym. I don't know if you remember that. And then you're like, if you stretch right now, it's a win, bro. And I sat there watching your stream. I was like, okay. Yeah, fitness comes up a lot. That's good, dude. I think that's probably the most overlooked thing in, uh, in the programming game dev world. Oh, dude, this is sick. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're here. And if you got a dip, no pressure, but dude, you're awesome. I love your streams. 
<clears throat> Alright, let's go to the armored raptor here. How many frames is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Say so we got a ten frame Marty up in here. So you're working on a fire breath or something? Oh. I think that was earlier. I think I cooked on like uh I had to do like a fire yeah, like a fire trap for this area. Super simple. But I did that this morning. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's easy to just like pump out content when your game's 2D and not 3D. <laughs> so. Alright, we're also going to create... He has a little top piece for his armor set that's going to fly off. So we're going to create a kinematic body 2D. Um, oh no, probably a rigid body actually. Change type. Rigid. You took a dragon's head and like traced it to make a fire head? This was the other day? Oh, what the heck? Oh, dude. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I took one of my other sprites and I was trying to make a fire. Ah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, this, this guy here, the final boss of my game. Also Spelunky, why are you going... Why are you playing scary music? Yeah, okay, okay. I remember now, yep. Yeah, I was I was messing around with like generating particles based off of like pixel positions in Godot. I was like, it's actually pretty sick. I didn't end up using it at all, but it was a cool experiment. 2D workflow is pretty cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, I uh, I do like pixel art. That being said, my my next venture after this game launch, dude, is the the 3d pixel art so like right i have it all in 3d but then it's like a pixel art shader on top of everything that's my favorite style dead cells wait does dead cells do that wait does dead cells do that i mean i've never played the game either way that's like definitely my favorite it definitely okay this game definitely looks like it could but yeah, where you do like a 3D model and put a shader on it. I don't know, this one could be either way for me. I think it might be 2D drawn. I think that's how he gets those animations so crispy, dude, probably. <clears throat> well, that's sick. I was actually, I think I was gonna ask you, but I didn't have time, but what was the time frame for your project? Didn't you say it was like three years or something? It like makes me so sad. I'm like, I want to play it now. I want it to be done soon. Ooh, we actually want probably a, uh, not a basic collision shape here because it is going to be a different, it's a mask shape. Started about six months ago, but you'd like to start actual combat playtest in the next few weeks. Mm. Wait, you only started that project six months ago? Dude, I would expect a, a six-month project to not have the art that your game has going on in it. Which, granted, I've seen very little, but I just, from what I was looking at, like, I was like, dang. You you nailed that, like, League of Legends feel. So, well, that's actually, I'm impressed. I thought you'd been cooking for a while, I'm not going to lie. Let's do an armored raptor mask. We'll flip it. Give it a collision polygon. Oh, but I want it to be, yeah, shoot. We move the whole kinematic body 2D. We don't move just the sprite. Otherwise we get some weird interactions. You've been cooking experiments for a while with the camera system and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, that's one thing. So this is a... Uh... Oh, I don't want to understand the messing around phase. That was like a few years of learning Unity and then Unreal. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I wish I had actually done more of the experimentation phase. This is actually my first project I ever created in Godot. 
and it just spiraled into like a full-fledged project four years later, I never once branched out and learned other things. Which I guess like uh, David Yu, the creator of Spelunky, actually like advocates for that. He's saying like when you make a game, only learn what you need to. Like at the same time, I'm like dang dude. I wish I would have like done other stuff so I like knew what Godot was capable of. <laughs> There's just part of me that's like a little like, hmm, I could have done that better. All right, I'm just trying to simplify this shape here. But yeah, that makes sense. The messing around phase before you figure out what you want. Seems like a better approach than what I went with. The, you make one thing, you make, you make one thing based off a tutorial and you're like, this is it. This is it. Um, point now, on the bright side, at least you didn't put any time into Unity. Wait, what's up with you? Oh, oh, oh. For a second, I, I read that as Unreal. I mean, I had done a little bit in Unity, but I've never liked Unity, dude. Maybe because I'm, like, not actually good at coding. Hey, and by the way, thank you, NecoCR Tech, for the follow. <laughs> I, uh, I always joke on my stream, I'm like, dude, I should be, like, the beacon for, for individuals, because, like, my whole game's built on if-else statements. Like, dude, if I can make a game, you you for sure can make a game. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, like, uh, 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 crazy examples, I didn't even know what arrays were until four months ago. How I went three years into development without knowing what arrays were, you tell me. But there's a reason my player script is over 3,000 lines of code. Arsene over on YouTube. Godot is the engine I'm using. 3D but pixelated? Isn't there an emulator for that? Uh, an emulator like emulates other systems. But I think there's a shader for it for sure. Hot Hoculus on Twitch. You go in the distance without a raise, dude. Yeah, I don't... Pff. Gandalf, me when you use if else blocks. Bonk. Yep, pretty much. Everyone always is like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, I, I got a game to release, and I'm not going to sit here and learn how to do it properly, but it is what it is. That's that's why the, the plan is once I release, and I'm not in just this crazy crunch time, I'm actually going to sit down, watch some tutorials, maybe learn an actual coding language, <laughs> actually work on improving Oh, man. Because there's for sure a difference between I'm improving my code versus I'm adding content to my game. And I have prioritized adding content to my game every time. Wow. The Pomotroid. All right. Let's go 90. Let's go damping of 50. No, damping messes with things. Don't do this. Don't do this. We'll go applied forces probably. Guess I'm suddenly feeling the need to go learn about arrays. I mean, they just, I, they was just doing stuff that I definitely needed to. Again, if you're doing the right thing at the beginning, you need to just <laughs> crap out code. I guess so. Next, we see our tech. Will you develop the 3D project you mentioned on Godot? I thought about it because Godot 4 has like, I want to learn Godot 4. I'm stuck on 3.5 because of version control. But I would really like to, to use Godot for the 3D project. Rays are nice because you can easily loop through indexes. Hold on. Yo, that music, I actually thought that was my phone. I got spooked. I got a pregnant wife, so if I miss a call, it's not good. All right, death. Let me go and let's get some blood from the cultist here. Which actually, I'm actually just going to copy it from the Dread Rex. So like this initial blood here. We can actually just put in here. Paste. And. Let me make this unique. We're going to just adjust these particles a little bit. With the direction that they're going. They're going to be going negative one. Yeah, we'll have the head explode here. With the pixel particles. Whoa! Blackie Jesus, welcome. Thank you. 
get that progress. Thank you for the bits, my friend. Seven days. Maybe thought show the nice site earlier this week. I know I bookmarked it. Yeah, I'm gonna read it too. Took a nap and woke up. Happy you're still streaming. Thanks, man. Objects lists can accomplish the same task though. Ooh, now I gotta go learn about object lists. Okay, we'll have this blood here. I think I'm probably chilling with that, honestly. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. All I need is the kinematic body. So I forget how I do this, but I did it with my monkey enemy when his head flies off his body. And when his banana goes flying. Banana. Linear velocity damping is two. So negative 200 damping of two. Okay. And then four one. Negative 100. Angular velocity. Oh, and then I can actually apply a little bit of this in the velocity. Okay, sick. Now we can test this out right here. We'll just run it very quickly here. See how this death animation turned out. And the cool thing is this rigid body will then bounce around on the ground and uh, interact with the environment. Just a nice little thing for uh death animations oh but then he destroys himself too quick so let me try that again let's go like five seconds or maybe we go 10 seconds honestly zoom out we'll cue free at the end here all right we make it visible we're just going to adjust the modulation here. Yeah, just like the speed with which I feel like I can implement stuff in Godot. It's just crazy. I've never had it in any other engine. Then again, I've spent the most time cooking in Godot. So maybe that's not fair to say. Like, well, I'm so fast at using Godot. Yeah, okay. Maybe if you spent four years on Unity, you'd be the same way. All right, anyways. Let's try this again. Arsenal on YouTube drives you crazy. It's a weird topic. You get it? I mean, it's a little out of place in the game dev stream, but it's not weird. Like I said, Arsony, I think it's a very human thing to try and talk to the dead. Oh, I got to make that not show up. Interesting. So the sprite here, we got to animate its visibility. Once it's finished here at the point nine, we key it out. No longer visible. Uh, as for the... blood it's emitting and then it is no longer emitting cool as for the kinematic body yeah this is strange does it need a physics material no it does not what about the monkey head how does that one work monkey head Okay, same exact things. All right, it is it is what it is. All right, I think this animation is good to go then. Last thing we need to do is make sure that it gets rid of itself when the player switches rooms so that the mask isn't just transitioning between levels. So that is a super easy... Oh yeah, here it is. It's already plugged in. Perfect. Uh, this, however, is not good. Right. All right, I hate this, but give me a new script. Copy pasted. We just got to get it done. Okay, perfect. Now that we have the armored raptor death animation, we pop back in here. We go armored raptor death. Pop it in here. Hey, we're good to go. Uh, the one thing that I'm concerned about is these sprites are all flipped horizontally, including the Dread Rex, right? But then his death animation for the Dread Rex is definitely to the right, which is going to cause issues. So, to mess with myself, to mess with future Matt, instead of just fixing that, I'm going to adjust it in the code. <laughs> so we'll go to the death here. 
Uh, yeah, death scale equals sprite dot scale. Um, okay, that could be a problem. I see why that is a problem now. Okay, you got me. I can't. I, I'm foolproof. I made it foolproof. Previous Matt wins this one. Let's set this to flip horizontal. Ah, uh, honestly, it kind of actually scuffs everything though. Hey, thank you for that follow. The lone, wo oh, the lone wolf six nineteen. Nope, we're messing. We're messing with the code. Y'all ready for this? Death dot scale equals. No, 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 no. We just do this times negative one. If it's a negative, it goes positive. If it's a positive, it goes negative. Wolf. All right, death. The lone wolf. Just wanted to be unique, but it was a big fail. <laughs> it's okay. At least you didn't put a T in front of the name Sundown. For no reason. And then everyone says soon down. And then you're like, yeah, okay. I guess that makes sense. That's how the language works. That is definitely sundown. <laughs> okay. Dread Rex, you're good to go. So these enemies are now primed and ready. We go back to our level where this all began. And we cook. So like down here, I could probably do... do an armored raptor hold on what is my what is my catalog of enemies it's armored raptor dread rex the two cultist enemies a reaver a little bug flies hive sack and feathered serpents gotcha all right it is it is what it is let's go empty enemy here We'll just have a 40% chance to spawn in an armored raptor here. Nice. The one wolf, huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. A loner wolf and the lone wolf. Wow. Kettle meat pot. What's up, everyone? Put another raptor over here. All right, now that we got some enemies in these corridor areas, which honestly, like, this restricts it. I think this is the most. This is going to be the most restrictive uh, area. But I wonder if that actually benefits the player, like just being able to like stand right here and just shoot in a straight line. Definitely, if you have certain upgrades, but it is interesting to think about. Okay, so let's go feathered serpent. So just a 20% chance this guy spawns in. Nothing crazy. We'll give a chance for them to spawn in down here. And then up here. Like maybe I have chance a chance for a reaver to spawn. That might be kind of cool. Two of them. It's a, very, it's a very low chance. Maybe I'd throw another one up here. We really make it spicy. And then I could even do like fly enemies. Even though we got a spawner. Wow. I appreciate that follow, man. Welcome to the stream. When you create your ID, you thought it was a very generic name. It turns out there are hashtags for gaming IDs. So more than one person can have your same name. You put it because you didn't want it to say taken. And you put a capital I. But for some reason, the case of Twitch, it shows it as a small I. No, yeah, if it was a capital I, I'd be, it'd be chilling. Oh my gosh, that's so unfortunate. Arsene on YouTube. Well, I guess just the past couple talks weren't really good ones, but I hope our relationship improves again and everything is okay again. That was a good thing to hope for, Arsene. Uh, yeah, so in here, I could do a fly enemy. I think it is just called a fly enemy. Hive fly. But this, this like creates them. So I don't know how fruitful this is actually going to be. I 
Like, I guess I could do this. Okay. Well, cool. So now, I think we, we've cooked. It's a good level. Now, we throw the darkness on, and we see how this level looks. Oh, spooky. I like how they're glowing up here. Now, I know you might think it's dark, but the player has a light on him. So it should be good. You'll still be able to see no matter what. And a lot of these enemies that spawn in also have glowing features. They're either holding torches or, you know, things of that nature. Well, this is cool. That's exciting. The first level, down, done. 49 to go before release. How long did that level take us? Don't tell me. Three hours? Oh my goodness. I read dev. Hello, my friend. You were streaming earlier, weren't you? I saw. Wait, did you raid me earlier? Is this ridiculous? <laughs> one week left. I know, dude. One week left. It goes crazy. I honestly have no idea how to feel about it. Oh, shoot. I remember. We got to adjust every single one of these to fit right there. Line up the tile maps. I don't want to create the same level structures everywhere I go. But it will be cool to do something like this. And then maybe something like this. Nice. This will definitely improve performance. Huh? What is this? Ridiculous stream for Godot. Oh my goodness. I love it. What the heck? Yo, okay. So yeah, I... Hold on, I'd seen this, but it like it wasn't working on 3.5.1 for me. I gotta update to get over 4.x. But I can't do that on my game. Dang it, P. Gorley, what a guy. Dang. It's cool. I recognize all these names. Absolute homies, each and every one of them. This is awesome though. I love this. How I can add so I've actually seen this. This is cool that you I feel like I've seen other people use this. Wow, that's awesome. Is there a 3.5 one? I'll have to try it out. I was using some other one, like a 3.5 one, but it's like a dough coding, but fun, and you can level up. Which I, that might be you, but maybe it's not. No? That's okay. My next project, we're going 4x, so it'll be usable. But don't use it on the main project. Oh, no. Why not? Will it wreck it or what? All right, give me the flame holder here. I'll stick you right there. Duplicate it. Shift this one over here. Nice. Now down here, I'm thinking we don't do torches. As long as it's three tall, that's pretty good. Mm, yeah, but what I can do... Oh, this is a good idea. Yeah, okay. We do two little hidden passageways up here. Yo, this is spicy. And then they open up. Okay, yep, this is sick. They can open up into some different areas here. Okay, over here, what do I do? We create a treasure room, right? Nothing too crazy. Um, yeah, so a lot of these levels are going to look like this. And they're going to involve, like, finding the proper pressure plate to open the, the correct path or, you know, whatever. Which we could even do... 
Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, like we could stick this here. Drop the ceiling in this section. Nice, I believe. And then the player has to get that pressure pad. Pressure plate. Which we're going to move over here. Can't really see anything yet, though. Let's get some of this cooking over here. Okay, something like this. Right. Using your focus on the YouTube chat, but I get it. It's not like I could, I could do any better. Arsene, dude, you got like a victim complex, bro. I try and I told you, dude, I try and read YouTube chat, but it's definitely I, I focus a lot more on the Twitch one. All right, over here, I'm not going to do any rocks. We'll just keep this area nice and pristine. Down here, though, is where we can do some cool stuff. Or, like, we get rid of these temple walls. And maybe it looks like that, actually. And then down here, I can make this like a little more. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Arsony. Arsony. Dude, I'm happy you're here, bro. We all got issues. Okay, yeah, so down here for sure. I wanted to pop up again. We can even do some of this over here. Ooh, some spiciness. Okay. Let's add in our chests. We have an order of operations now. So I think up in here is definitely where I want the chests to be. Like the, the chest room or whatever. And maybe I can create some, some of these here. I like this effect here. Oh man, but it is not, it does not like me. Uh, okay, so in the middle here, we could do something like that. Cause like, ideally I want an enemy up in here, but I also want there to be like, see like, how come this one has that, but this one doesn't? Oh, cause of that. Interesting. See, I want there to be... Yeah, okay, I can put the chests up here. Um... No, 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 not on that tile layer. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna stick the chests up here. I like that you said my name like you're Odin. What the heck? Odin. Awesome. Okay, we're going to duplicate these. Shift them. So these are going to be the only chests in this level. If the player wants to skip them, they can. But we're going to reward exploration by doing this. All right, so they could just hop up here, hit the pressure pad, pressure plate. And leave the level, but they could go up here and get some treasure. We don't want every level to be like this. Sometimes we do want to force the player to have to to go up here as well, but we can have some be like this. Pressure plate right here. I'm actually going to push it up here. I'll take these two. 
stick the pressure plate down on the on these now. Nice. Okay, okay. See, down here I could have like a bunch of reavers. Which, you know what? Maybe that's actually what I go for. Now that I think about it. So, let me actually get rid of a bunch of these. Yeah. Okay, something like that. We fill this in with the rocks. Right. And then, yeah, like hanging from the ceiling here, we do like the giant. Oh my goodness, the raid's going crazy today. You fairy angel, what's up, dude? Party of three, welcome everyone. We're just cooking on some levels for my game. You can check out my game here if you'd like to play a free demo or see what the heck I'm working on over on Steam. But I hope you had a good stream, dude. Welcome. I don't think I've seen you around here. Think you're new? What up, what up? Thank you, Listios, for welcoming, welcoming them. All right, let me go and grab the giant hive sack. We'll have it hanging from the ceiling here. Yep, everyone toss. I, I hope I'm saying it right. Eupharial? Up, up Harial? It's probably Eupharial. Anyways, hello. Well, the music just went hard. Thank you, Listios. Um, now, down here, let's go and throw in some pustules. We got a bunch of these smaller ones we can stick in all over the place. You're saying you're right, which is weird. A lot of people mess it up. Oh, oh, whoa, snake. You ferial? How do people get that wrong? There's like basic, like, grammar? I don't know. You ferial? PH? F sound? Maybe it's because I play too much Diablo. I read too many Archangel names. It's second nature at this point. Asmodeus. Euphoria. Tyrael. You know what I mean? That's just kind of what it sounds like. Anyways, yeah. Uh, for those of you who are new here, I'm so I'm building a roguelike. Coming out very soon. And uh, it features crap ton of dinosaurs, but also... The idea behind it is trying to make something like the Binding of Isaac, but in 2D. And also, uh, trying to make a game that I personally would play the crap out of, which I intend to do. Been working on it for three and a half years. And let me tell you, it's been probably the best thing I've ever done with my life. Super fun. Love me some game dev. Roguelike, instant neuron activation. I was making this roguelike before the genre blew up and got popular, I promise. Now, nah, but for real, I, I, I probably won't play this trailer again. I've gotten rated a bunch today, but I'll just show a little tiny, teeny bit of it. This is what it looks like in-game. So each run's different. Uh, the main goal of the game is to kill the Feathered Serpent, Quetzalcoatl, the most powerful Aztec god. The story is a race of dinosaur humanoids called Saurians. Have, ultimately, they... they Went out on crusades against humanity, sacrificed and killed the majority of them, and resurrected their god, or brought their god to the mortal realm. Quetzalcoatl, a.k.a. the Feathered Serpent. But if any of that looks cool to you, go check out the game. Demo's free, and the demo has a crap ton of content in it. So you'll know exactly, like, play the demo. If you like it, you're going to freaking love the main game. So... Uh, you know you're a gamer when you can say the sentence, I played too many Diablo, too much Diablo, so Archangel names are second nature to me. And you can use it casually. I guess so, right? Arsony. Um, yeah, that's how I imagine Odin was sound in your head. I'm repeating the question. Sorry, I know some streamers don't like repeat ones. People sometimes get Arsony wrong. Am I getting Arsony wrong? Anyways, I'm liking this. Let's do some of these small pustules up here. Just a couple of them. Like, 
Just to show that, hey, like, maybe it's somewhat spreading up here. Kind of cool. So some of these temple levels are going to, like, be very put together. And, like, oh, whoa, yeah, nice, pristine. But these other sections are, like, whoa, they're, like, being, like, corrupted and infected by these, like, bug, alienish enemies. And it looks all cool. Uh, right. We have our chests. We have our pressure plate. We have the level layout. Give me the torch holder. Sorry, the flame. The flame holder. Let's go ahead and stick it right there. Wow, it's a beauty. And we could also stick like a flame holder like right here. Just like really let the player know, hey, check out this light. This is where you want to go. Oh, shoot. I better lift it up, though, so that it aligns with that one a little better. Oh, man. What is, what is the, the position? 97? Did I get it? Negative 50? No, hold on. 96. I was off by one pixel. It is what it is. Um, cool, yeah. All right, we got lights. Let's go ahead and put in the pots now. Well, let's do enemies first, actually. Oh, well, Snake, hey, YouTube, what's up? You're in both chats. Now it's super neuron activation. I got it exactly right? Dope. I got arsony right. So over here, I don't I don't like spawning enemies right out the gates where they can see the player. So I don't think I'm going to put any enemies over here. But down here on the bottom, we can create some reavers for sure. So we'll do 40% chance of spawning a reaver and then maybe like a cultist dagger. Something like that. A very low chance for that. We'll do another reaver down here. Then we'll do another one right there. Popping up over here. Let's go Cultist Dagger. And then a Cultist Torch enemy. We'll do two of them up here. Up here, I guess I could do a Reaver. You're right, I could just take the same spawn and put it up here. Which is what I'm probably going to do. But I can also take a Cultist Torch put it up here all right um we got enemies don't want any flying enemies maybe low 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 chance of spawning in though actually you know what maybe i don't even need uh need to like, i'm just looking at this and you know what maybe it is what it is yeah you know what it is what it is i'm, I'm not doing it but I could do fly enemies. Okay, you got me. So we have some hive flies that I can have a potential spawn ins for. Yeah, okay. Create a bunch over here. These enemies are so tiny, it's like, okay, it is what it is. <clears throat> okay, and then opening this door here, maybe we have a bunch of flies just waiting on the other side. Maybe, maybe we don't, but they can be waiting. And there it is, level done. I'm seeing now that we have some spikes. That's okay. I'm not going to use them. They can remain out there. All right. We go pots now, which we have to key in, which is fine. So let's key in some temple pots. I love how they look. I'll be honest. Bada boom. 
Arsony on YouTube says, so anyway, yeah, the repeat question, like my friends didn't know what D&D is and you really want to play? Should you introduce him? Yeah. Dude, d is so much fun. I just recently started a new campaign. I've been playing with the same group for like five years now. And some members in that group, I've been playing D&D for like eight years now. So definitely worth it. All right, probably not a ton of pots down here. Do you have some old D&D friends you could steal? Uh, unless you live in Utah, probably not. Also, if if they're an old D&D friend that like you don't currently play D&D with them with them anymore, there's probably a reason. <laughs> probably don't want to play D&D with those people. But that's not the case for all of them. I definitely just did just have some friends who were like, eh, D&D is not my cup of tea. You know what? That's also fair. Yeah, there's a couple of people who I was like, hmm. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. All right, we're going to create two pots behind this, and then we're good. Perfect. Well, I love the pots so much. Genius idea, honestly. I also like how this area, honestly, was like the easiest to do for the background, <laughs> which is nice. Very nice. Also, it's crazy this area feels small to me, but like it's actually definitely like very big. I'm just saying it's crazy how it feels like, man, there's only like four rooms. What the heck? Um, all right, yeah, one thing you need to make sure every time I'm done with a with a level, we have to turn the darkness on. Boom. Okay. I never did understand what people see in D&D, but I don't really care if they like it. More power to them. Okay, I think genuinely, from what I've gathered of you, right? Which is probably horribly inaccurate and then we're close to who, how you are in real life. But, based solely off of the Twitch chats from you, I think you would love 4th edition D&D. I just do. And, and most people did not like 4th edition D&D. Um, so I think it might just be that, that kind of a case where it's like, oh, okay. You don't have a lot of imagination. I'm telling you fourth edition, dude, fourth edition, fourth edition is the most, supposedly it was the most balanced involved the most math and was the most like a video game. It was just the most like built, like, let's go. If that makes sense. Okay. Come on camera. I believe in you. Nice. I was just ahead. I was just peeking up above the little water's absorbed sign. Hi, Crumb. Crumb, you need a light, dude. You're going to start falling asleep on, on stream. That's not allowed. We're not like those TikTok streams, Crumb. I do like math. Yeah, but apparently that's why everyone hated for it. They're like, it's a bunch of math and it's so balanced and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hmm. Funny enough, I also really liked 4th edition. And I actually struggle with like the other editions of D&D. It's just interesting, you know? Okay. Uh, make sure that these are aligned. Thank you very much. Okay, let's carve out some stuff. How do I want this level to look? I actually do want you to have to go forward first. Like maybe fight a couple enemies first. Okay, but these levels, they're, they're involving the hive stuff. So I'll tell you what. What if... Hear me out. Tile map one. We get rid of those. Tile map two. Okay. What if we do this one? Almost entirely with this tile set. Not entirely. Almost entirely. I just feel like I could do some cool stuff here. So, for example, 
This is what I'm going to start with. And then we're going to carve out some cool cavernous spaces. What's going on with this? Excuse me? Not cool. But yeah, also, Elkop, D&D is so, like, dependent on the people you're playing with. Because if you play with, like, like, genuinely, like, most of the fun just comes from the people you play with. And among, in my friend group, the purpose of D&D isn't really to play D&D. The purpose is it's a committed activity that we all share that we plan out that forces us and keeps us together because we're committed to the long-term project. So like, that's kind of how like we utilize it. Cause it's like, if it's just game nights or whatever, like if it's any other activity, it's a little easier to bail and flake on. But like the fact that it is, it is what it is. It is D and D. It kind of um, helps us all to be like, all right, you know what? Like, this has got to be, um, like we're, we're committing to this. Anyways. So I definitely engage with D&D &D differently than probably other people. Maybe not though. Maybe that's also why most people engage with D&D. Okay, coming down here, we're going to break a ton of platforms. Like those platforms I was doing earlier that we were creating earlier. Nice. Okay, this is like actually like, see, this is cool. This is spicy. This is a cool looking level. Now check this out. We take the hanging sack thing and we can create a couple of them here. We'll create two. Hive sack. It's like league bowling. My dad used to do that. Team depends on everyone being there, so you can't just bail out. Interesting. I never even thought about it. But yeah, that say probably be the same exact thing. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Yeah, that's actually an interesting point. It's like, yeah, like I might not be super into bowling, but like it's something we can all take seriously. We all gotta we all gotta be there. So that also helps, I think, with the enjoyment factor. Is it's like it's just with friends that I want to keep in touch with, and these are friends that I'm talking from like high school. Like I graduated what 2016, so it's actually been 10 years, and it's like I still want to like meet up with some of, of with some of them and hang out. And so, anyways, it's done its job. Honestly, it's kept us together. Like it's everything that I've that we've. You know wanted it to be okay so this is cool because it allows yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know, it just definitely feels more um yeah, it just feels more what's the word i'm looking for i don't know this it feels different like i'm playing through these random levels it's definitely going to be different Um, Kagan Daku. Whoa, what's that? Programmer versus cybersecurity. Which one will be affected more by AI? Are you just trying to hit spicy takes? Jokes on you. I don't know anything about either. Okay, this is the city tile set. Give me the temple tile set. Thank you very much. Thing. It's like a freaking system. It's interesting. This is cool. <laughs> I don't know what the purpose of it is, but it's cool getting to draw these in. Maybe I do something like this. Nice. Um. Sorry, I'm thinking about it. I was not ignoring your question. I think that 
uh, I mean, affected by equally. I don't think like once there, I don't really see AI like replacing any sort of like job. I'll be honest. <laughs> I see it like people having to utilize it within their jobs. I just don't see it like, like you're always going to need a programmer who knows how to in interact with the AI and then get the AI to write the right code for the right situation. Cause that, programmer has knowledge of how the inside systems work like you have to know how to ask the questions so just because it changes the way that programmers are going to interact with stuff i don't think that that's particularly uh like oh so i, I say equally like they're both going to use it but i guess let me actually engage with this a little let me activate some neurons cyber security thinking about your question for two seconds longer probably cyber security because there is the, they are the people who are invested in in making sure things are safe, and AI has pr proves quite a significant risk of of uh, you know this is no longer safe like security threats. So probably actually the security cybersecurity people, because they have to learn how to w like protect against people using AI. Spicy question. Spicy question. That's like asking roofers and contractors who will be more affected by nail guns. You want to pursue, pursue a career in one? That was my initial take too, Elcott, but then I thought about it. I'm like, wouldn't cybersecurity have to consider that and be affected by that more? Uh, let's see. This is tool smart people will learn to use it to be more efficient at moving jobs because you'll need less people to do the same work faster. I guess so. But also, like, dude... Aren't companies already pre like even without AI, dude, isn't it already like stupidly annoying and hard to get a to get a job? Like, you get laid off. Like all these gaming companies are laying like thousands of people off, and Sorry, hold on, I'm responding to the message. And I'm seeing how much longer I can uh, stream, how much longer I'm going to stream for. I'm probably chilling. All right. job market is always up and down in tech yeah but i mean isn't that like kind of intense 600 or whatever like that feels like a lot you know maybe it's not i honestly have no idea i'm literally just going based off of other people's reactions at least i admit it okay let's get some of these spikes going on these golden spikes Nice. Little mini platforming jump there. No big deal. Anywhere else where I can stick some spikes. Maybe I stick them right here at the bottom. Just be super mean. I'm doing it. It's the last area. I'm doing it. We're turning into a mean game dev. I How mean can I be, okay? They got yellow paint on them, okay? Um... Let's do some of this. Put some chests right there. Yeah, so this the cool thing about this whole area is it's all going to be dark. Very, very dark. Flame holder. Oh, scary music. I don't know if I like it. Okay, Spelunky, I get it. Okay, Spelunky, Spelunky. Take me back to the top. By the way, I felt honored to meet Stego. Oh, he's still in here, dude. Let's get it. Whoa, he's getting chroma keyed out. Everyone, this is a dinosaur I've had since I was three years old. His name's Stego. He's a beanie baby. 
I've actually just kept them. I have baby photos of me. I'm three years old. It's wild. The magic dino. The good luck dino. He's like my rubber ducky or whatever. Like how programmers have their rubber ducky to look at their code. I have my stego. That's actually not true at all. I got my flexi rexy for that. He gets super chroma keyed out, but he's a 3D printed flexible mini T-Rex. Actually printed and, and sent to me by Blackie Jesus. If he's still hanging around. Um, yeah, so he looks at my code with me. The Stego just keeps my bed warm. He just hangs out. Okay, yeah, we'll put three chests right there. I like it. Potential for a fourth chest spawn down here. I dig it. And we'll put another potential spawn in right here. Uh, Arsony, sorry. Let me go over to YouTube. It's just like you've been making your campaign and there's a weird route, so I don't feel great about it anymore. Dude, you gotta look up this... Just look up a video talking about the lazy DM arsony. You only need 15 minutes to prepare for a DD and d campaign. You know, you gotta plan for all these different routes. And I haven't seen any recents of the mine. If you build more houses in an economy that can't afford houses, jobs will be lost because you're too efficient for the demand. What the heck? That comment got me a little lost in the sauce, not gonna lie. If I build more houses in an economy that can't afford houses, jobs will be lost because you're too efficient for the demand. Okay, it makes sense. But I, what is this analogy trying to tie back to? AI? I guess, yeah, because then the jobs aren't... Yeah, okay, I, I can see that, I can see that. The correlation. Okay. Just trying to get some stuff in here. So this is also gonna be a unique level because it's gonna be pretty dark throughout like the whole level. Except for like these glowing little pustules and and honestly they can be covering some of these we'll do a big one um yeah what else can i do we'll probably do big ones to cover the chests it is what it is Okay, down here we can probably do some more pots and stuff. Dang, okay, lots of them over on that side of the wall. Cup. Unfortunately, that is true. There's no perfect economic system. The way that should work is the prices of houses come down in response to additional supply, but there are forces that tend to act against the natural economic flow. Retirements and hedge funds, for instance. Interesting. Hey, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for making the dinos dance. I'm just happy that there's no worms today on the bottom of the screen. All the worms are the early morning viewers. Think about it. <laughs> I stopped streaming in the mornings. Look, they're, they're gone. Or am I just trying to bait someone into changing into a worm? You'll never know. All right, let's do... We have 54 of these, dang. Let's do the big ones now. 
So like I said, the big ones are gonna cover up like the chests and stuff. I think it should be cool. Okay. All right, this is going somewhat well. I mean, pretty well. Whoa! Welcome. Thank you for the raid, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're cooking on my game here. Dang, the raid's been going crazy today. Thank you, everyone, for the second extinction event of the dinosaurs. Really, at this point today, they've been extinct like 12 different times, but... Dude, I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a good stream. I've been saving my points for... To pop in one day and play the game. When I can. Oh, were you doing another 24-hour stream? Oh my goodness. If you were, go get some sleep. But anyways, thank you everyone. Let me go and show you my game. I've been cooking on it three and a half years for all of you who are new here. I, uh... It's called the Feathered Serpent. It's a 2D action platformer roguelike. Uh, actually, my dream game, right? Filled with dinosaurs, as you can see. I've been working on it in Godot, version 3.5. Uh, yeah, the goal, the idea was to take either Hades or the Binding of Isaac and put it into a 2D platformer. Also, I know I have like a little triangle of death here. Sorry, green screen. So yeah, I actually have a free demo out. Uh, the game's releasing in seven days. And uh, if any of it looks, if you're, if you like platformers, if you like roguelikes, I can't recommend my game enough. It's very fun. I've had people put over 250 hours into the beta and over 30 hours into the demo. He probably passed out. Yeah, geez. Thank you for the follows, everyone. But yeah, honestly, I'm just super grateful to Raid. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's definitely my dream to continue to work on this project after the fact, have it be kind of like a live game and do updates for it but that depends on how well it does so any any uh wish lists any follows it truly does mean a lot i uh i had to go back to work this starting last week uh i held a kickstarter successful kickstarter and that allowed me to finish this game and actually well almost finish the game and uh you know, push it over the edge to actually get released. I was able to work on it five months full time. That was a dream. Let me tell you, I went back to work and just, I worked five hours today. I have a job that isn't a consistent eight hours. Dude, that's five hours. The, the way that I felt so drained. I was like, bro, this sucks. I would put in 14 hours on my game though. I'd be fine. I'd be like, let's go. So anyways, definitely is my dream to uh, be able to work on games full time. Lurkin, thank you. Travis Roman, hello. No worries. Hey, and thank you for following wishlisting. I'm serious, it means a lot. I actually have a kid coming in July. So I'm hoping that, uh... <laughs> that's partially why I had to go back to work. I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta probably uh, save up money for health insurance. Your boy doesn't have health insurance right now. But it's totally worth it. Totally worth it to make a game. Congrats, thank you, everyone. But yeah, wait, it happened? I was like, oh, crap. Probably not the best reaction, but I was like, dang. This is my all or nothing. Like, I was like, hey, t clock's ticking. I'm having a kid. I was like, well, I got to finish the game. Because, like, honestly, once I have a kid, like, I got to be providing. I got to, you know, I'm going to be tired, like, way more tired than I already am. So it's like, <laughs> I was like, I, my brain just, like, a, a switch flicked. Honestly, you guys want to know the secret to motivation? To finishing your projects have a kid easiest easiest uh motivation hack in the world in fact i have a baby toy that's directly to my right anytime i'm like oh man i don't feel like working i all i gotta do is turn my head to the right i'm like dang i'm having a kid i was like i gotta do it <laughs> i gotta i gotta work it actually unlocks a, a new level of of motivation shy ryan yep i have three now there it is 
Pony Sparkle. I love the name. Thank you for the follow. Alright, this level's looking cool. Let's go ahead and throw in some enemy spawns now. So down here, most likely. Let's do a, some Reaver spawns in. So the system that I've used for my game, because it is it's supposed to be replayable, random every time. I've opted for the Hades slash Binding of Isaac style of uh, procedural generation, which is pre-designed levels with random elements in them. So as you can see, I'm creating, they're called random enemy spawners. Even if I randomly pick this level, all of these things have a chance to despawn or spawn in, along with different enemies that can spawn in or not spawn in. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. Let's go and throw in a Dread Rex spawn potentially down here. Two of them. And then we'll do a Cultist Torch. And a Cultist Dagger. Also, another benefit of my game. Benefit. Plus. We have Dinosaur Cultists. Tell me you haven't heard of an idea that spicy. That's spicy, dude. Dino Cultists. I'm telling you, go play the demo. First 10 seconds, you're going to watch a whole bunch of humans getting sacrificed in an Aztec temple by Dinosaur Cultists. Make love, not war. Make kids, then games. Whoa, that's a quote. Another cool thing, for those of you who are new here, if you watch my stream long enough, I put I allow people to design items and put them into my game. Full stop. So, we actually have uh, curated, received, created, composed, I believe, over 15 items. El Cobb has done seven or eight of them. Arsony, holy, retracted messages. Sorry if I was not reading them on the YouTube chat. <clears throat> Alright, let's go ahead and get some flying enemies in here. So we'll probably do some hive flies. We've added some cool items. You've done about eight, and about half of them you just gave the chat. Yep. Okay, but the the items El Cobb cooked on are they actually were my favorite. So there's one. It was a sundial item. It allows you to freeze all enemies in a level. In a level. Uh, it refreshes every 30 seconds. And I gave it the JoJo time stop sound effect. So. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely uh, one of my favorite items. Still to this date. I don't think anything tops it. Maybe Bone Boots. An item that allows you, it gives you protection so you can stand on enemies. Usually you cannot in my game. But that allows you to ride on top of flying dinosaurs. And all other sorts of shenanigans. Bone boost is pretty cool too. Oh yeah. Anything that breaks the game, worth it. Avan Avgard? Good evening. Good morning. How are we doing well, dude? I miss ya. All right, let's go breaking platform rock. Oh, not this one. We want the temple breaking platform. Okay. And we'll stick these in here. Perma break on. Ooh, is perma break on in the other level? That could very well mess up my whole game. Let me turn the darkness off real quick. Nice. No, okay, we're good. We're chilling. I got scared there for a second. Get back to our level. Dang, three levels. How long have we been streaming for? Five hours? Three levels in five hours? That is efficiency. <laughs> no, no, it's not. We'll do something like that. Let's make this one more centered. Perma breaks on all of those. It is nice. 
Uh, Arsene, I do that. Sorry, I do that when I'm about to leave a stream because I don't want a cluttered YouTube watching history. Oh, there it is. I've always been curious as to why people do that. Okay, now we're going to throw in some pots. Yeah. And then we're probably chilling. Looks good. Give me some pots. And the destructible elements are the most important factor in a game for fun. Hands down. So we gotta have our Zelda pots. What would the player do otherwise? What, you want them to attack an enemy? Pfft. No. Okay. And then arguably these little pustules can totally count as like a... An enemy. Or a, a, I mean a destructible thing. This is already going to be kind of crowded down here. Let's not put in a ton, but we can put in a couple. So it could be crowded. could also not be crowded, depending on the enemy spawns. All right. Oh, I think that does it. That's good. Save it. Looks good to me. Turn on the darkness. Nice. The player has a light around them when they're going through the levels. No need to worry. And all of these things glow. <laughs> so they'll be able to see stuff. Okay, sick. There's the third level. Take me to the fourth one. Nice. Alright, let me get an update here. What says the wife? Mm. Gotta respond, otherwise I'm being sent to the couch. I'm sorry, stream. Okay. Yes, I love you, babe. Right. Let's do this level. So first we have to align our tile maps because I didn't do that when I created the base level. Image remove. Second, I need to create, I need to add in pots. Okay, just to be able to drag in here. All right, let's, uh, let's create a spicy level. I would like a level where you go straight and then you gotta go down. It's like there's like a wall or something right here that's preventing you from continuing further. Nice. I like it. And then you can go up. And we'll say, yeah, if you go up, maybe there's uh, some chests or something. We'll make this optional as well if you wanna go up here. Oh, and then the first time they play the level, they won't know whether or not they gotta go up or down. Oh, spice. Max level spice with that move right there. And then coming down here, we can make it a little more uniform. Let's get rid of the temple overlay there. Okay. Um, hold on, I gotta, I gotta carve out this to just get a feel for what the heck I'm doing. These are not lined up. I thought I lined them up. <laughs> Maybe I did not. There we go. Okay. We're aligned. Shy Ryan, is there a way to make it look like there's no way to return no matter which direction you go? Is there a way to make it look like there's no way to return? But just make it look like it. But then there is a way to return. Is that kind of what you're asking? It's like the choice is spicier. Oh, I like a spicy choice. 
Yeah, I can. I can actually totally make... Uh... Oh, hold up. Holy max level spice, dude. This is for you, Shy Ryan. I honor your game dev idea. Okay, check this out. So I have these... Uh... They're called breaking platforms, okay? So once this breaks... Right, it breaks, whatever. It, it comes back after whatever, X amount of seconds. When it comes back, you can no longer, you can only fall through it. You can't go up through it. So I got you right there. You and Elkop, Elkop did the same thing. Don't you remember that, Elkop? The whole idea where you can either choose to fall down into two bosses or, or go a faster area. Okay, so we do this. So if they choose to go down, they fall through. They're spiced up. They got to go this way. Um, going up, though, is a harder situation. How can I do it going up? Let me, let, let's just handle one at a time. Let me design this area down here. So there's the one, the one and done area. Everybody do this. Yo, this Palunky music's going crazy right now. And let me get rid of this. Nice. Um, okay, I think honestly, like right here. Yeah, we'll probably get rid of all of this. Yeah, do something like that. Get rid of this. Have this up here. Nice. They can come back up through this way. It is what it is. Um, in Mario, there's platforms you can jump onto, but not back down from. That's true. That is true. I'd have to create a whole new thing for that. That's a good idea, though, Shy Ryan. I unfortunately, I because I'm launching in seven days. I have a self-imposed. A self-imposed restriction of I'm not allowed to. Oh shoot, I'm not allowed to uh, add in new stuff. I think I just gotta focus. Which even then I feel like I've already broken that rule, but I'm trying to focus. Okay, so this is actually the limit of the camera, so I gotta make sure that everything that I design is within that limit. So actually, this is the bottom limit. That concerns me. I'm going to look at our other levels and make sure we didn't break that rule. Because part of me thinks that we did. Which could be bad. So let me see the light. Yeah. That's okay. We'll drag it down for this level. Um, did I do that in level 5-2? So this, is the, this box here is the limits of the camera. Uh, which is what I'm checking here. I did not do it in this area. Perfect. Okay, 5-2. Don't save. Did I mess up 5-1? There's no shot. The first level? Dude, maybe I did. I wouldn't put it past me. Let's see this. Control. Oh my gosh, I did. Wow, thank you. You inadvertently saved my earlier levels. Okay, take me back to... Turn on the darkness. Take me back to 5-3. Make sure to turn on the darkness. Take me to 5-4. This is the one we're currently cooking on? Yeah, okay. So that's the bottom limit. Um, you could just duplicate your existing breakable platform. Just make one change. Let them break it from the bottom. Most of the, of the game, it would work... As is, but in this level, you could switch it up without notice. You know, when you make it sound so simple like that, what am I supposed to say? No. It just makes me seem unreasonable, you know? Gosh dang it. <laughs> Fine. And you know, it just makes it so easy to do that too, which is just all the more <laughs> fun. He didn't think fun. He thought the other F word. 
Nah. So check this out. I'm pretty sure I can come in here. And then this top area here. I'm almost positive I can shift this. Yeah. And it doesn't shift it in the other ones. Look at that. Godot's cool. Okay. Yep. It is what it is. So now, super spicy choice. It's either one way or the other. It'll loop back around on itself. This is this is going to be cool. It loops back around on itself. Oh yeah, this is cool. Rather, this is going to be cool. Excuse me. Okay. Max level spice has been achieved. Do you need to rotate the texture? Um, I don't think I need to. Because the thing is, if I rotated it, then the like breaking animation... Because it shows like the rocks falling down. If I rotated it, then the rocks would like fall up, which just looks weird. I think it's fine. You just bump into the bottom of it, and it will like break. Like I think it'll it'll be fine. I ain't worried about the texture. Okay, where's the where's the ceiling here? Okay. Good to know. All right, so it breaks out back here. So they both end up, they, you both end up in the same spot, but it's just one or the other. So check this out. So you both end up here and I can I gotta block it off at the the top in the bottom here again but that one should be that should be easy so the temple breaking platform again and then wow oh, dang there's actually quite not convoluted, but it definitely is is doing things. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Wow, holy follows. Thank you, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Work, work. All right. Off I go, then. Okay. Uh, let's do all of this. Nice. Get some rocks going here, I guess. Whose nostalgia did I just trigger? I like the lack of indicator personally, but I enjoyed the first Legend of Zelda. I don't like having games hold my hand. This is also the fifth area in the game, so I really am... Like, I'm fine doing spicy stuff because it's like, dude, it's the final area. Of course I got to be mean to you, you know? At least that's how I'm choosing to view it. Yeah, something like this. So both of these are here. Well, actually, I need to take this second one that we did, that we cooked on, where you break it from the bottom. I'm actually going to reuse it here so that this is how you break your way up once you've finished with whatever path you took. Dang. This is cool. Okay. So you got to break your way up. Okay, so there's the control. Kind of strange that I would do it like that, but um, okay. So we need basically two different 
things. Okay, so you run to the very end here. This is going to be blocked off. You need to pick one of these paths to go back to step on this pressure pad that's going to be back here. Okay. Once you step on said pressure pad back here, then you run forward again. Okay, yeah, this is sick. So give me the trap wall. So this is the initial block right here. So this is a door that is tied to, it's very straightforward, tied to this pressure plate. So we come drag this pressure plate over here. Huzzah. Slap it down right there. Arsene, what's up? Seven days left is crazy, I have an Avgard. Actually helped with the campaign, thank you. Dope. I just had to cut every single route except the simple one because everyone except is like they haven't played D&D &D before. Some of those messages I'm going to delete after this stream, but for now they're staying. Yeah, okay, did you read the Army of Darkness Forever book? I've never read that book, Arsene, over on YouTube. Okay, so this is the pressure plate, pressure plate tied to this. But we need a block here so the player can't just run backwards. So we do the same thing. We create a wall right here. And this wall or this this wall's pressure plate is just right in front of it so you just walk through it um i know that this looks a little strange when it's raised maybe i pull it down because i was thinking the same thing maybe i do that kind of play in theme with what we had going on yeah i'm fine with that give me the pressure plate Slap it down right there. We'll put it four away from the side. We'll move this one to one, two, three, four away from the side. Nice. Look at that. So now you can go either route. Um, cool. Let's go ahead and throw in some of these flames. These, uh, what do I call them? Flame holders. So we'll create two, shift this one all the way over. Um, Arsene on YouTube says it had D-Dite Enforcers. They're cool, sort of like robot villains. The automatons. Dun, dun, dun. I'll put a torch back here as well. Alright, did I get it right? This is 98. 96, not even close. Make sure this is centered. It is. Nice. Okay. So we have these flame holders lighting up this main hallway. And then in these air regions, we're going to keep it dark. Nice and dark. Um, so I'm thinking if they go... Well, let me redo this bottom area here because I don't actually like, ooh, don't actually like this showing like that. Okay, something like this. Okay, it's looking pretty sick. We probably well. I want them to be different, like enough, like oh, this one's way better or cooler versus this one. So let's only have like the weird bug enemies down here. Are you doing okay, Crumb? Crumb, hi. And then up here we'll have only cultist enemies. That might be kind of cool. I kind of like that idea. Sure. Actually, let me fill this in, this dirt area, just a little more. 
Okay. Yeah, up here I'm thinking we do cultist enemies, maybe some armored raptors, and then down below we do all the bug enemies. And maybe up here I could even do like... Like a trap or something like right here. Let me do... I'll do in a buzzsaw or whatever. We'll go saw blade momentum. So the momentum ones only show up in the temple area. Um, hold on, this one might be scuffed. Okay, it's not scuffed. But it needs its Z-index changed. Uh, put it at a 2. Take me back. So we could do something like this. And this will have like a momentum swinging effect. Maybe we stick it right there on the edge. Or maybe right here. Okay, yeah, something like that. So it's going to be swinging like this, back and forth. Nameless, hello. I am streaming very late. But I wanted to stream, you know. I saw you streaming the other day. I was busy running errands, but I looked on your stream for a while. I was also lurking on the nameless stream. Me too. Because <laughs> like this saw blade momentum, we can actually rotate 90 degrees. Yeah, and then this one will be swinging back and forth in this area. Like that. Yeah, so I have the buzz saws right there. This one won't have buzz saws. Let's. Ooh, it wants me to do a hive sack. Well, I could. And I and I probably should. I've I put one in every other area. So yeah, maybe I do this. Yeah, and we'll throw a sack in here. Nice. Give me a hive sack. We finally have everything uh, ready so I can actually make levels in the temple now, which is what I'm doing right now. It's a very surreal feeling, Nameless. Uh, Arsene on YouTube. Yeah, the reason I remembered you mentioned dinosaur cultists, they're basically robot cultists. Oh, interesting. That, sound, that sounds spicy. Sounds like a cool idea. Okay. Uh, continuing on, spikes. I could do spikes down here. But do I want to do spikes down here? Just because I can doesn't mean I always should. Nah, but let's do it. Nah, let's not do it. We'll just do reavers down here. I like that idea a lot more. Let me scuff up, like, the bottom temple area here a little more. So it's not as uniform. Also, chests. Yeah, we need different areas for chests. Probably just at the end here. And then maybe, yeah, at the end here. Yeah, okay, I'm cool with that. I think I have the first puzzle to work. Nameless, is your game a puzzle? I guess it makes sense. All your mechanics are very puzzle-oriented. So you don't have to try to give your stream more focus the next time I see you live. Send it. Okay, I'm going to flip. Okay, honestly, get rid of this. Give me the chest. Flip it the other way. Thank you. Okay, let me copy these, duplicate, stick these right up here at the top. Honestly, I can stick them right here. Nice. Um, is your hurt box an enemy hurt box? Oh my gosh, it is. 
Wait, th that means that these will actually break chests. Wow, I didn't know that I had designed that functionality. That's pretty interesting. Well, I don't want that to happen, so let's move the chests right here. Um, yeah, it's like an escape room fighting game. I'm working more on the puzzle features now, though. Oh, I didn't know it was going to be a fighting game, too. Sounds freaking dope. All right. So moving through here. Go ahead and give me the... Uh, man, it would be cool to do spikes somewhere, right? Even if it is just like right here. I could do another breaking animation right here. Interesting. I'll do it. We'll go temple breaking platform. Thank you. Drag and drop, you put you right there. All right, let's do some spikes down there. I think it's good to try and stick with my theme. It's good to force me to, to hey, yeah, let's make it with these. Or whatever it happens to be. So I don't need the fourth one, but I'll do the third one. Dang. Take all three of these, shift them over like this. Okay. Very nice. We got some spikes. Probably a spicy jump here. Can the player even make that jump? Yeah, I'm sure they can. Um, I'll definitely know. I would have said hi the other day, but it's running. Because, yeah, the player has a laser. They can kill an enemy in one shot. Oh, what? Because your enemies aren't smart enough to move out of the way when they get hurt? No, they're not smart enough yet. Not smart enough yet. All right, give me a random enemy spawner. Let's create some temple enemies up in here. So this is going to look like armored raptors, potentially. Uh, cultist, just a normal cultist with some daggers. Now, honestly, in this first area, maybe that's all it is. Like maybe back here we do a cultist that has a torch instead of a armored raptor. And then we can, we can just take those same enemies, put them up here. Um, but honestly, probably more torch enemies. And honestly, with a dread rex up here, a chance for a dread rex spawn. And then maybe right here we do cultist enemy. with a chance for an armored raptor to spawn. Nice. Okay, so lots of enemies up here. Let's create some reavers down here. Hi, Crom. Crom, you're so sleepy, dude. What are you looking at? Hi. What's up, Crom? Okay, dude. I hope you're having fun, dude. He's, so I get worried that he just stares out the window into the darkness. I always joke, I'm like, Crom, stop staring into the void. And I'll go and like close the window. <laughs> I feel like it's not good for him, you know? He's staring into the abyss and the abyss is staring back. I don't think it's doing him good. Let's create some reavers. I could probably do nothing but reavers down here, honestly. And maybe I do serp. Oh, I could totally do feathered serpents down here too. That's a good idea. Because I don't really have a ton of them. So let's go empty enemy. We're going to make it very low, low, low spawn chance here. But we'll go feathered serpent. Throw you in right there. Maybe we can create a couple here. Maybe we even 
potentially spawn in one right there, huh? Well, that's fun. Maybe a feathered serpent right there. Maybe one up in there. Okay. Maybe one spawns in here. We got some absolute spice going on. Um, if you want to make them more of a challenge without bothering to make them smarter, you give the enemies iframes when they get hit. Oh, that's a good... The player already has that. You can add it to the enemies or just make the laser less powerful. Yeah, no, adding it to the enemies. Yeah, that'd be smart. Yeah, or you just make the... I mean, I don't know. I think it'd be feel super bad, though, if the laser was less less powerful. Like, I would feel better as a player knowing that the laser's powerful, but they have iframes. Does that make sense? Instead of just like, man, my laser's so weak, and it takes forever to kill enemies. That's just my player brain, though. I don't know how that actually translates over. I would assume that that, honestly, other people probably feel the same way, but... Maybe they don't. Okay, give me these pustules. So he's going to be all over the bottom area here. Not like a, a ton, a ton, but enough. I could also totally do eggs in the temple. Temple is actually probably a, the perfect place to do eggs as well. Interesting. I'll think about that. I've thought about it. Definitely we should do eggs. Because, yeah, they're in the city, but it's like, yeah, I'm in the temple, you know? Give me some dinosaur eggs. All right, give me these large pustules. Create a bunch of them up here. King Hits, how can I get those dinos like yours? It is for all the subscribers here over on Twitch. Indeed. And then you got to watch and potentially gamble away your money in order to save up enough money for like the T-Rex, which is the Dread Rex. Or, I mean, there's Stegosaurus, Dimetrodons, all sorts of different um, enemies. Okay, uh, going back into the random enemy spawners here. 13, what is 13, 19, 13, 19, 14. Such a strange picking here. Let's give them a chance to be hive flies as well. Or you know what, honestly. We'll just do this. Okay, bunch of fly spawns down here. Potential fly spawns. It's only 20% chance. Unless you have one of the lizard relic items, and then you're probably screwed. Okay. All right, we're chilling. Like, for your own stream? Just curious. Oh, it's called Stream Avatars. Yeah, it's like a $20 program. And then I just designed the dinosaurs myself. They're all for my video game. That are then put down below. Also, Nameless told you before I you beat me to it. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> no, thank you, Nameless. All right, let's do pots. All right, I could do eggs. Maybe I don't do eggs. So maybe I do like scrolls. Maybe I don't do anything. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Is this really where the player spawns? Give me start. I'm honestly going to shift it over. You can start right there, player. All right, let's create some pots. Plenty of pots. This is a, a for sure a spicy level. I dig it. I like it a lot. Okay. Ah, 
how we look in pots. Do I want to do any pots down here? Probably not. Maybe we just keep them up here. We just keep them. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Please fix the time map. What's wrong with the tile map? Which one? Or is it meant to be like that? On, on the left side, upside down tree thing? On the left side, upside down tree thing. Huh? This thing? This? Oh, how this one extends down lower? Let me see here. I mean, yeah, that's probably just a case of like, yeah, the other side. Yeah, how it doesn't extend up, extend up as high. That is an interesting point. I don't know why it is like this. But. Oh, yeah, that's really weird. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Oh, I mean, like, yeah. No, yeah, it's supposed to be like that. I guess this just could be moved into the middle instead. And that's Temple Breaking Platform 5. We can just do something like that. There's just a horizontal temple line thing. Now that is also bugging me, but it wasn't a problem. Oh, what? My other left? Oh, shoot. Left. What? There's just a horizontal temple line thing. This? You don't like that? That's okay, we can get rid of it. Oh shoot. Fixed. No problemo. Nameless, you're the best quality control I've ever had. Let me just tell you that. I appreciate it. All right, level is uh, mad chillin'. We got our pots everywhere. We have the layout, enemy spawns, beautiful. Let's turn the darkness on. Let's get the heck out of dodge. Bada boom. Save, okay. I actually think, let me double check here. No, I think my wife's going to be home in like 10 minutes. Probably going to end stream then, before I start cooking on another level. Every level takes me usually 30 minutes. Also, there's freaky music to try and end stream to. Um, sorry, you just got here though, Nameless. I was, so, this is actually pretty good today. 5 hours, 50 minutes. It is 9 p.m. my time. This is probably not how it's going to usually be with streams. We'll see what I can do though. Tomorrow might be a better gauge. Why is there a weird space? Wait, 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 where? Weird space. Weird, weird space, where? No, let's find us from before. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool, yeah, everyone enjoy sleeping. Arsony. I haven't really found chapter of the book yet. Interesting. It's like a digital book. I fixed it. Okay, sick. All right. Canvas modulate. We're good to go. Four levels. It is what it is. Crumb, say goodbye to everyone. Crumb. Why are you just looking at me, dude? Hi. I hope you're having a good time, dude. All right. Good stream, everyone. I'm glad that I can still stream every now and then. It makes me sad that it's not how it how it was before in the golden days. But you know what? It's not going to be that way for long. Okay? Seven days. And then everything changes. Kids are important, Arsene. Quickly. Retract all the messages. Have a great rest of your evening. Nameless and Elkop. Thank you, everyone who is new here. Please. Go wish this my game. It means a lot. Game's coming out. Seven days. 
even if you don't even plan on buying it, wishlisting it puts it out, puts it on popular upcoming. So everything I appreciate. I'm going to go find another really small streamer to raid because that really changed my life and changed my dev journey. So I'm going to pass it on, pass along the good luck. I appreciate all of you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Gandalf. You take care too, dude. Hey, thank you for those follows. Cheers, everyone.